Try to sneak away in, but you want every opportunity to do it. Welcome you to Pro Box TV's Wednesday Night Fights. We are in our world headquarters in beautiful Tampa, Florida, with a great night of Pro Box TV future stars looking to catapult their status in their particular weight classes and a main event which guarantees instantaneous gratitude for those who love two men who are ready to go to battle and those two men are Sinaloa Mexico's Manuel Gallegos tall aggressive a proven finisher with 17 career wins by knockout tonight his first fight on U.S. soil for Richard Van Sicklin outstanding football player turned pretty darn impressive boxer vibes fights here at Pro Box TV for the second time and looks to remain unbeaten as he is 13 and 0 going into our main event. The quote I love that Vibes took from JJ Watt, success isn't owned, it is leased and rent is due every day. To be great at anything, you need to work hard. Hi again, everybody. I'm Mike Goldberg, two guys who would relate to that quote from J.J. Watt. Of course, the former world champion, Chris Algieri, powerful partner, the two-time world champion, the magic man, Pauli Molinaggi. You just said a moment ago about Manuel Gallegos, Chris, that this man is a beast. He is tall, he is strong, and he's looking to really showcase his skills here tonight. Yeah, when you look at his record, you've got 16 KOs and his 19 wins. You've got to be thinking that KO's on your mind. He is a pressure, pressure, pressure fighter. I've heard it. You've heard of pressure fighters, right? He's a pressure, pressure, <laughs> pressure fighter. He wants to come forward. He wants to bang with both hands. He's got bad intentions with everything he throws. And he is going to look for a mark key victory against Richard Van Sicklin tonight and perhaps a home right here at Pro Box TV. Oh, absolutely. A win here. He could be joining the family. He puts on great fights. He's very fun to watch. And like I said, he's a two-fisted attack kind of guy who's looking for KOs at every moment. He has been referred as arguably the best Mexican super middleweight out pretty high praise. <laughs> Especially when David Benavides is in the same Yeah, and I, I said arguably. I said arguably. <laughs> That's a big argument. <laughs> arguably is the key word right now. That and pressure, pressure, pressure. Seemed like last time we saw Richard Van Sicklin, all the pressure was on him against unbeaten Hakeem Lopez, Naji Lopez's older brother, in vibes was all about it. I'll tell you what, I look at it the opposite way. You know, Van Sicklin is always the guy who it, not a lot is expected of him, and he always overcompensates and overachieves. You know, ever since the amateurs, he, this is the guy who made the Olympic trials after starting boxing late, uh, uh, start, took a boxing in college, uh, on the college boxing, uh, on this co university, Olymp uh, university boxing team. Usually guys are in the amateurs. He took the college boxing route and then joined the amateurs, qualified for the Olympic trials, wasn't expected to go there. As a pro, he's remained undefeated, pulled off some upsets, including the last fight we had him here against Hakeem Lopez, a fight he was not expected to win. I think Van Sicklin likes these kind of situations. He was about to walk on at the University of Washington and play college football there, big time D1 college football. And that athleticism, Pauly, you see has carried over to the boxing ring. Well, that's the thing, you know, boxing, it's a fight, but it's still a sport. And so athleticism and, and athletic talent and athletic ability will still get you uh, uh, around the ring and, 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 and get you uh, with, with that kind of talent and that kind of skill and that kind of natural ability you can work off that. I always say you don't have to be a good athlete to be a good boxer, but it certainly helps. And Van Sicklin is a great athlete, and, and it's, it's helped in his boxing career. It's, it's a sport. It, yeah, it, yeah, it certainly helps Superman Roy Jones Jr., one of many great athletes who have had great success in the sport of boxing. Co-main event of the evening. It is time for Blast. 2020 Olympian in Tokyo. I love this quote about the 20 year old rapidly rising star. If fighting was a subject in grade school, Daryl Bell Saint would have been the model student. His opponent is the former Brazilian super middleweight champion fighting out of Sao Paulo, the very confident Lucas de Abreu. 
Then another future star in a six rounder. This one in the light heavyweight division. Najee Lopez is back. 10 months since suffering an injury. He said he's refreshed, reinvigorated, and the owner of a brand new mindset. He's gonna face off with a tricky southpaw and 39 year old Christian Rios. Six round super welterweight matchup featuring the 7 0 Puerto Rican pro box future star Marcus Baye, who has never gone past 238 of the second round, six of his seven wins by knockout the other. A DQ victory. His opponent, even one, Jared Tennant, who told us my punches will get there faster. I'll make him miss and I will make him pay. We start with a four rounder in the light heavyweight division. A true survivor who has navigated some of life's most tumultuous waters. 22 year old native of the Bronx, Derek Citron, set to make his professional debut against the native of Mexico City, Dario. Guerrero and Citron quite a story he has been around the pro box facility for many years since he was 18 years old his path to tonight is one in which he was shot five times in Tampa then knifed in Philadelphia involved with gangs in Los Angeles and he talked to our leader, Gary Jonas Paul, he said, can I come back, can I come back? And he said, yeah, come back, find a home. And when he came back, he was 305 pounds. Yeah, yeah, he had to, you know, completely make on life. Uh, he's lost all the weight, as you see, and he's got himself fully focused. And uh, he's been living here, he's been living the life and uh, lost all the weight and got focused on his boxing. Chris, another example of boxing has saved my life. And Dario Guerrero, 30 years old, he started boxing at a young age as well. All five of his professional fights were last year, so a pro debut and a guy who started one year ago. Yeah, I mean, this is a tough pro debut if you ask me. Dario Guerrero, you know, he's got he's got a bunch of fights. He doesn't have a sterling record, but he's been in some really tough matchups, and, and you know, he's always had a good account of himself. So not an easy pro debut for Cintron. Our tail of the tape for our first fight of the night here live on a Wednesday on Pro Box TV. Derek Cintron ready to make his professional debut. He is eight years younger than his opponent and will have a slight reach advantage over, I guess it's Dario in Spanish, Dario in Portuguese. We know it is Guerrero. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pro Box TV event center here in Plant City, Florida, where tonight Pro Box Promotions presents an evening of professional boxing. Damas y caballeros, bienvenidos al Centro de Eventos Pro Box TV. Esta noche Pro Box Promotions presenta una velada de boxeo profesional. This bout is scheduled for four rounds. Esta pelea está pautada a cuatro asaltos. Your judges for this contest, Los Hueses, Tina Griffith, Brian Gary, and Shami Shipman. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Michael De Jesus. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white and gold, in la esquina azul, con pantalones blanco y dorado. Pesando 169.4 libras, weighing in at 169.4 pounds. His record, one win, two losses, and one draw. Con record, una victoria, dos derrotas, un empate. De Long Beach, California, Dario Guerrero. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the red with white, in la esquina rojo con pantalones rojo y blanco, pesando 171 libras, weighing in at 171 pounds. Tonight he makes his professional debut. Esta noche hace su debut profesional from Tampa, Florida. All right, guys, the rules were told to you in the locker room and in the corner. You know what I expect. The, these are good. You're good here. Touch gloves if you want to. If not, go back in the corners. Set to get things started here on a Wednesday night live 
from our Pro Box TV event center, Derek Cintron and Dario Guerrero. Light heavyweight matchup scheduled for four rounds. Here we go. It's time to fight. Guerrero in the white trunks in the southpaw stance. Derek Citron, the problem, the 22-year-old, in the red and white trunks. Pro debut against a southpaw. Yes. Like I said, not an easy pro debut for Cintron. But we don't really have easy fights on Pro Box TV. Good fighters, great fights. We don't promote boxers. We promote the sport of boxing. Whenever you've got the Orthodox or South Southpaw matchup, there's always going to be a battle of the front foot. Right now, we're trying to see who can get their foot on the outside. There you see Cintron got the better position. Cintron did have success back in the Bronx before things kind of went sideways in his life, Paulie. Yeah, had some good success in the amateurs up in the New York area. New York Junior Olympic champion. He'll look to make a strong impression. And he has put in some work, not just getting his life in order, but coming down from 300 oh, nice. and five pounds. Nice right hand set up by a couple of jabs to put Guerrero into position for that right hand. Yeah, you can always see the guys with the big amateur backgrounds, how comfortable they are. Even for a pro debut, round number one, he's looking very, very smooth, very comfortable, letting his hands go freely. And all while fighting a southpaw, which obviously his handlers know that he knows how to fight southpaws. Body work from Cintron here in round one. And let's see if Guerrero stays southpaw, guys, because watching some of his prior fights, I've seen him in the orthodox stance. Boxruck has him orthodox. He's maybe. obviously comfortable from the southpaw stance here tonight. Yeah, maybe if it's a draw, I expected him to be yep. a right-hander tonight. Dario taking a dare, switching up his stance. Cintron throwing out that jab for distance. Yeah, he may, uh, he may come on this second. This one scheduled for four. There you go. There you go, right back. Jab, jab, right 50. Well, Cintron throws everything with ill intention. That is for certain. Jab, right 50, right 50. Little blood over the left eye of Guerrero. Yeah, and that might have been from a clash of heads. Sometimes. Yeah, it's a weird spot for a punch. Yeah, it's the side of the side of the head, side of the eye. Southpaw Orthodox. Yeah. We felt him out. Now we got to get going. We let him get a little bit too comfortable in there. You know what I'm saying? He's, he got a little comfortable in his first round, his pro debut, and you can't do that. Okay. Yeah. Deep breath. I need you to get behind that jab this round, and I want you to start making him uncomfortable in there, okay? We didn't give him any reason to not want to be there this, this last round. This round, I need you to get behind that jab. Camina para acá. Como tú vienes para acá, tienes que soltar la derecha. Está bien. Primer round, está secando. A la guaje también, a la guaje. Tienes que ser a la guaje, okay? We'll go big without a touch off. They go big. The corner of Guerrero, that, that's a great point. You, you see a, a young man coming in, going through so much, guys, and finally making his professional debut. You don't want him to get into a comfortable situation. Yeah, absolutely. I think that was really smart on, on the corner's behalf to, to mention that. But, you know, the damage might already be done because Cintron looks very comfortable even starting now in, in round number two. He has certainly taken an unorthodox path, to say the least to work his way to become a professional boxer. Nice shots down the inside by, by Guerrero. Guerrero. He's starting to get work in there. These guys are putting on a show. Yeah, Guerrero, I talk, like I said, he, he doesn't mind mixing up on the inside. Even with Cintron, he looks like he's got good pop on his punches. Nice left hand there by Guerrero as well. Hey, Cintron has a nice poker face, though. He's a good, good poker. Yeah. Looks like nothing's bothering him. Well, when you've been he's shot and post. stabbed on <laughs> multiple occasions. Uh. Not only shot, but 
the hey, story is that the car came back and oh, ran yeah, him over as well. Body, body, body. He survived, which we're happy for right now. He's trying to survive a body attack from Dario Guerrero. Left and right, left and right. Down, right 50. Right 50. Right 50 to the shoulder. Again. I want it. The message between the first and second round in Guerrero's corner right. certainly seems to have been heard loudly and clearly. Yeah, he's got a bit of an awkward rhythm here this round, and it's, 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 it's allowed him to get inside and land some shots. You have to work the jack. Also some head clashes as well as he's been flying in. Stay in southpaw. He'll walk through it occasionally, but been southpaw throughout this Hands from Cintron, straight and then an overhand. So yeah, Cintron has to be careful. Just to, he's got to shorten up the punches just a little bit on the inside. It's, sometimes when he gets in the exchanges on the inside, it's a little bit wide, and he's coming around this side of Guerrero as opposed to being able to land. Nice little left hand there by Guerrero. Five bouts all last year for Guerrero. 19 total rounds. The distance, so yet to be finished as a professional. Mm. Good shots from Guerrero. We'll see. You know, Guerrero lands a uh, uh, Centron lands a nice right hand right here and there, straight right hand. But on the inside, it's Guerrero's shots that are shorter, and he's able to do the better work because his shots are a little bit shorter. There it is again. Yeah, Guerrero. He just dips his head, throws those hooks off both hands, and it's been surprisingly accurate, even when he's not even looking. Nice hook there by Centron. Right, it's fighting. Well, gentlemen, we, we, we got to fight. Yes, yeah, we do. I was going to say, this fight is degenerating into a, a brawl here. Well, tú lo golpea, pero no es que tú lo golpees, te está echando para atrás. No te puedes echar para atrás. The battle, and I mean battle, continues round number three. Dario Guerrero in the white trunks, the southpaw stance. Derek Cintron in the red and white trunks. Yeah. Guerrero likes to jump in there, and, you, and, and, and I think the, the being leery of the head is making Cintron back up, and, and, and it ends up giving Guerrero that momentum. I think it's also the point that you said about Cintron being just a little bit off. Punches are a little wide. He's, still, he's hitting him more cuffing than with the knuckles. A lot of times it's hard to get respect from a tough guy if you're not hitting him with those knuckles. Yeah, and on the inside, that's been the case. And it's been a battle both ways. Chris Algieri, how do you have it after two? I got it even 1-1. You know, I had I had Cintron taking that first round, which is pretty obvious because Guerrero didn't do a whole lot. But round two, on, on request of his corner, Guerrero came out swinging. Magic Man agree? Yeah, same thing. And then we, I tell you, we've got a fight here in the, in the third round as well. The first minute and 10 seconds. Pretty even so far here in round number three. Sneaky little uppercut from Cintron. Yeah, you can see both men are really just edging to take control, to take over. That was a slip. As soon as one guy lands, the other guy comes right back. Yep. No one's willing to concede yet. Cintron has overcome so much in life, as we've documented. But the pro debut is still the pro debut, right, Chris? And oh, man. You still, you're in live fire for the first time inside the boxing ring. I've had two. I've had one as a kickboxer and one as a boxer in terms of pro sports. And I mean, I'll never forget either either one. I mean, it's just, it's just a whole different feeling when you take that headgear off and put on those small gloves, and, and that record counts. Paulie, you and I have talked about that very same thing, especially taking that headgear off, right? Yeah, yeah, different experience. Final minute of round number three. Good matchup to get us started. 
and a great story for Dario Guerrero as well. Attended high school in Long Beach and attended college at Harvard. Wow. Studied film, fought, and boxed it all. Oh. They have a program for dreamers, and his dream came true. Big shots, Guerrero landed a nice overhand right. Cintron came back with some good body work. And for a guy who's gone to Harvard, you're thinking, oh, well, why, you know, why are you fighting boxing? Yeah, what the hell are you doing here? Like this, right? <laughs> but he, he told us he loves it. I tell you, the way he's fighting, only somebody who loves it will get into get himself into, willingly get himself into these kind of degenerate kind of brawls. <laughs> well, Mexico City is where he was born. If you spend enough time at Harvard, you start to say, spot feet, spot fighter, right, Paulie? In yeah. your border. Harvard by, like uh, Google Hunt. I'm sure he's been there. Yeah, more than once. Hey, you're, at, you're at 82. I need this round. Hey, you got to give us three minutes of number work. Let your arms hang down. You're good. Sure, this hey, last round. Listen, you got three minutes, son? Yeah. I need all three of them. Hey, we got to make it happen big in this round, okay? I told you, you stay yeah. with we, we talked about this fight uh, becoming a degenerate fight. Sharp right hand there by by uh, Guerrero on the inside. We saw the attack for Cintron to the body, but you see Guerrero pushing Cintron back. And like you said, Chris, you know, it's a little bit wide on the shots for Cintron. He's not able to get Guerrero off of him because he's not able to get that respect on the inside. The shots are coming around the sides, not able to turn those knuckles because they're sh shooting. He's not shooting those punches short enough on the inside. Yeah, and that sequence in Guerrero, it was more body pressure than anything. Not, not, it wasn't big punches being landed by either man, but the, the physicality of Guerrero, because of those slapping shots, are, are not getting the respect to hold the ground. Fourth and final round. Dario Guerrero, much like Vibes, Richard Van Sicklin, who will fight in our main event, started boxing in college. Guerrero started diagnosed with cancer. He lost his mom to cancer and did a documentary as his thesis at Harvard entitled her name, Rocia. Oh, he might have been fighting at 18, started fighting at 18, but here in the fourth round, he started fighting as a, as a right-hander, and he's uh, given his own give and take here in round four, fully as a right-hander, just as everybody else expected him. Yes. <laughs> From the start. <laughs> he saved it for the end, Goldie. He did indeed. Say what you will about Guerrero going to Harvard and asking why you're here, but this kid's a fighter. Yes. He said he only knows one way to win, and that oh. is the tough way. And whoever wins this oh. one is going in tough. Big shot. Oh, oh shot. 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 Finally turned that right hand over and got respect from Guerrero. He's hurt. And that's what he needed to do. And he, not, only, not only did he get respect for it, he was, <laughs> I guess he said, you know what? I didn't take any of those big right hands when I was a right hand. Exactly. Let me, let me try my luck here. I think Guerrero's still a little buzzed. His feet are a little stiff-legged. Yeah, now it's the physicality of Citron carrying it as he's backing up Guerrero physically. Robox TV, guys. You got that right. Even the four round is a wars. Yeah, even the pro debuts are tough. Living the life, mm. if you're Derek Cintron, a, a little bit of a different journey to get here, but one indeed that he's looking to showcase his skills in these last 60 seconds. Hey, as far as I'm concerned, this fight's still up and up for grabs. Whoever wins this round is probably going to win the fight. And I tell you, Citron has made a case in, that in this past minute with some big, big shots, finally opening things up and, and shorting up the shots just enough to land some good, good eye-catching shots. Very well could be. Citron, is another one. Little fancy footwork and a left hand. Final 30 seconds of the fight. Oh. Yeah, I like the adjustment from Cintron in this round. He's he's starting to turn his punches over. He's he's being a little more precise on the inside, definitely getting some respect and actually put some hurt on Guerrero. What a way to get things started on a Wednesday night here on Pro Box TV. But here comes Guerrero. They custom every Mexican fashion. Wow. What a fight.
little bit of a slow first round, but then after that, I mean, round two, three, four, yeah, all barn burners. Yeah, this fight just degenerated into a real gutter fight, and both guys had to really gut it out. That was really good, but all right, my Tired? Oh, only four rounds. <laughs> it's well. shortage of highlights, Magic Man. Oh yeah, and we got things kicking. I mean, one thing Scott cooking in this fight, slow, like, like Chris said, a, a slow first round, but things got cooking real fast. End of the first round and here into the second round. A lot of physical work by Guerrero. See early on, you saw Citron just cook as well. You, know, you always like to see those when it comes to lefty versus righty, especially when they're rushing in like this. Although it was a good right hand there by Guerrero as well. A lot of times, look like Guerrero was putting his eyes down and just trying to keep everything shorter than Citron and just whip shots and he was landing them. There's a good right hand as well. Back Citron to the ropes. Both guys violently exchanges. There was some good shots in that in that last round by Citron as he was able to get that right hand going and physically also muscle Guerrero back. The official decision is in. Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after four hard punching rounds, we go to the scorecards. Shami Shipman and Tina Griffith both scored about 39 37. Trenta y nueve a trenta y siete. Brian Gary sees it 40 to 36. Cuarenta a trenta y seis. For your winner by unanimous decision, el ganador por decision unanime, Derek the Problem Sincho. unanimous decision. And by March 8th, that future schedule promos. And seven, six. What a way to get things started. And don't forget, Wednesday night is your night for fights here on Pro Box TV. Two weeks from tonight, Wednesday, March 8th, we bring you an exciting night of fights from Sonora, Mexico, with our founding partner, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions. Undefeated WBC Latino lightweight title holder, Luis Coriano Torres of Obregón, Sonora, Mexico, will look to cement his place as one of boxing's future stars when he faces once beaten WBC. Fake car box lightweight champ, Misael Pichon Cabrera in a matchup of hometown rivals. Join us for all the action right here from Sonora, Mexico, Wednesday, March 8th on ProBox TV. Next fight comes in three, two, one. Up next here on ProBox TV, The Beast, 7-0 Marcus Valle, one of ProBox TV's future stars Six wins by KO only because there was a DQ in his last fight against Luis Midayal Sanchez as we look back to Marcus on that night in December. Yeah, you know, Marcus always has like has an engine. When he gets when he gets going, you know, the opponents start to feel the heat and his opponent back in December eventually started to feel this heat. The shots not only are start landing him by it, but he's also a guy who keeps him, keeps very composed, very uh, almost mechanical and like yeah. a robot, stalks you, but doesn't overpressure you, keeps his calm, has a very good poker face, and eventually you just see the, start to see the panic start to overcome his opponents. And uh, in this case, eventually the opposition was holding so much that the referee had seen enough and uh, decided to call the fight. Yeah, if I, if I, he's like the Terminator. He just keeps coming, putting on pressure. Absolutely. There he is, 7-0. Marcus Faye trains, lives the life here at the Pro Box TV World Headquarters. His opponent, Jared Tennant. Take a look at our keys to victory for Marcus Faye. Paulie. Yeah, Valle, Valle well, you know, needs to establish the jab early. He does typically do that. You know, he doesn't uh, smother his work. He likes to get in close, but he does it behind the jab. Don't be reckless. Usually he uh, 
he's not reckless. Usually he's very composed despite the all-out pressure that he brings on. And of course, being relentless, which of course is exactly that all-out pressure that he brings. His opponent is eight and one, 37-year-old Jared Tennant. Now living in Los Angeles, born in Kenosha, Wisconsin. He had his training camp at Main Street Gym in Houston. Stepping up at the age of 37 to take on a very young and talented Marcus Valle. Chris, what are the keys to victory for Jared Tennant? You know, he's got to survive the early onslaught because Valle is a very fast starter. He's only been seen the second round twice, so he's got to get to get to him early. And speaking of that, test the untested chin. Valle hasn't taken it as many big shots yet, so you want to touch that chin early, see how he reacts. But also pick your spots. We mentioned that Valle comes forward. He's working like he throws lots of punches. There's going to be opportunities for, for Tennant to punch in the middle of all that to test that chin. All right, with the official introductions for this matchup, once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is scheduled for six rounds in the super welterweight division. Esta pelea esta pautada a seis asaltos en peso super welter. Your judges for this bout, Los Hueses, Shami Shipman, Jed O'Connor, and Tina Griffith. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro Michael De Jesus. Introducing fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks in La Esquina Azul con pantalones negro, pesando 154 libras, weighing in at 154 pounds, with a record of eight wins, one loss with four wins by knockout, con record ocho victorias, una derrota con cuatro por la día del knockout. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the camouflage in La Esquina Rojo con pantalones camouflage. Pesando 154 libras, weighing in at 154 pounds. He is undefeated. Seven wins, no losses with six knockouts. Este invicto con siete victorias, cero derrotas. Y seis por la vía del knockout. From Wesley Chapel, Florida, he is Marquez. All right, guys, the rules are told to you in the locker room and in the corner. You know what I expect? Touch goals if you want to. If not, go back to your corner. Our tail of the tape for this super welterweight matchup, 24-year-old Marcus Valle against 37-year-old Jared Tennant. Valle, the taller fighter, he will have a five-inch reach advantage. Here we go. It's time to fight. Black trunks for Eaton One, Jared Tennant. Camouflage trunks for 7 0, Marcus the Beast Bayek. Tennant said in the fighter meetings yesterday that he had to get on the inside because he's the shorter man with the smaller reach. Said his punches get there faster. Chris, he said, I've got good head movement, good defense, I'll make him miss, and I will make him pay. If he's able to do so, Paulie, he will be the first boxer that we have seen do that to Marcus Valle in his young career. I tell you, he's, get, he's got the movement thing going. He's got a little sharper hand there, but he's got to get a little bit less jittery because it's gonna, all it's going to do is wear him out. A lot of, a lot of times, Marcus Valle wears down his opponents, not just with physical pressure like this, but also the mental pressure. Gets guys so getting going so crazy that they wear themselves out. First yeah, those four fights for Valle, Chris, were all first round finishes. Then it took him to the second round. Then another stop of Benjamin Whitaker in the first, and then the DQ. Yeah, with, you know, the word that comes to mind when I think of Valle up until this point in his career is consistency. The guy just comes forward, he lets his hands go, he walks you down. He gets hit with shots. As we've seen, he got hit with a couple of right hands. He just walks through them, gets back to work. Some have given him the moniker Robocop. Nice. I like that. Yeah, and he keeps he keeps very good composure. You know, he, I, I, what I like most about him is you know his, his sense of positioning. You know, even when shots are coming at him, blocks, gives subtle slips, doesn't he get hit too cleanly? But at the same time, keeps his positioning to remain dangerous, which of course makes him dangerous, but also lets his opponent know that he's not fully out of danger. Yeah, that that pressure's starting to wear on Tennant already. Yeah, and of course, that that jitteriness of Tennant is not going to help him because he's going to wear himself out. Valle with some punishing body shots right in front of our broadcast position. 
Jared Tennant trying to answer. Hey, Tennant's had this weird opening closing of his mouth since the beginning of the fight. I don't know if his mouthpiece doesn't fit him or if he didn't boil it or if his... Yeah, I saw that. It's just his mouth is open from the round before he even, he even did anything. Sound like he's tired. Marcus Valle has said in the past, I don't get tired, I hit hard, and I'm smart. The reason that's a problem, either, either one, it doesn't fit his mouth correctly, or two, you know, I can't say he's tired because he started the fight. Yeah, he started the fight with his mouth. I, so yeah, I, I just think it doesn't fit him correctly. And sometimes if, if it's one of those like 99 cent mouthpieces you get at the sports store, you gotta at least boil them to mold them to your teeth. I'm not sure, this, uh, this is just me speculating, but I, I usually don't see guys uh, doing that with their mouthpiece, especially late in the fight. Nice yeah. right hand there, buddy. And, and for the people at home, if you're not biting down on that mouthpiece and you're making a good occlusion with, the, with, with your jaw, it's a bit easier to break your jaw if you get hit with an open mouth. Take 30 seconds, all right? Breathe. Keep your legs out. Take 30 seconds and relax, all right? Relax. Good job. Just breathe. Just like we're in the gym. In fact, we are in the gym. All right? So listen. Very, very good. It's my gym. Stay behind that lead hand. Now listen to me, right? You got to hit that body. The body That's funny, Mark Ferre. In fact, we are in the gym. One of the things I really like about Valle is he mixes up his punches really well. High, low, around the middle, up the middle, down. There you see the overhand right to the left hook, right to the liver, looking for that liver again. Consistent, consistent work upstairs and downstairs. That's that's what Valle is all about. And even when the shots aren't landing, like sometimes, you know, it's some good defense uh, on the ropes by Ferret there. But, uh, 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 you know, the, the, the problem is that, you know, he's not, he's not in position to punch back. There's, the shots are coming so short and so precise, even when they're missing, Valle is not leaving really leaving a lot of openings for you to punch back in between. Yeah, and you mentioned Tenen is very jittery. When you're jittery, you're not really in position to punch either, especially with any kind of power. Yep. Tenen, yeah, I said Fred. Fred is the good business and trainer <laughs> in Valle's corner, Mark. <laughs> Mark Ferre, Ace of Beard in the corner of Marcus Valle, who has said in the past he doesn't look at his opponents, at least at this point. He looks at how he can be the best and how he should fight. And, and one thing, that we do here at Pro Box TV with our future stars, Paulie, is, is we watch the journey and, and we see what adjustments and how the maturation process takes place. And I was told that the focus for this fight for Marcus was to get back to being brilliant at the basics. And yeah, we're seeing that. I mean, fundamentally, he's very sound. Paulie was mentioning how, how much he's in position. He's got great balance. His feet are underneath him. He's always in position to punch, and which, which is why you can see he's, he's very busy, very consistent, lets both hands go whenever he has his man in front of him. I'll tell you what, credit to Tenen, too. Tenen has, has got fighting spirit. You know, he's he's looking to fight back each and every time. You know, it's he's, he's not always, he's, he's out gunned as far as ability here, but but he's he's got an A1 record. He didn't show up just to lose and just to be an opponent. He's trying his best to fight back. And his only loss was by DQ, Paulie, mm -hmm. in Mexico in the sixth round of a sixth-round fight. You can see, I mean, Ted, I mean, he's off balance there when he's throwing those shots, but he's had a nice little roll and shoot. He, you know, he, he is a capable capable fighter in there. He, he knows what he's doing around the, the boxing ring. I'll tell you what, a little bit of fatigue might have helped him because he nice started hand there by Ted because it made him less jittery. Yeah, settled him down. <laughs> it's hard to stay jittery when you're, that, when you're getting tired. Constant pressure here from Valle. That's what I was going to say. It was in about Valle. He's not class, as we've talked about every time Marcus Valle steps into the Pro Box TV ring. Tall, long-armed, throws hard punches from the outside, and he can crack with that jab, too. Yeah, I'm seeing him dig for that left hook to the body. He's like, are you a Puerto Rican fighter if you don't throw a left hook to the liver? <laughs> every chance you get. I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of Tito Trinidad vibes from, from Valle right now, the way he's throwing those left hands. Oh, nice counter right hand there by Tennant. Tennant looks timing. for the timing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great timing. Tennant looks for the timing. By the way, Chris, um, Marcus Valle's favorite boxer, Tito Trinidad. There you go. I mean, one of one of the, the, the many Puerto Rican greats, but when you talk about great left hooks, and, and look, his body type is very similar, too. He's tall, he's long. You mentioned his frame. That's a, that's a Tito Trinidad frame. And also a young chosen one, if you will. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the, 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 the legend of, of Tito was well known the country long before, you know, the, we even knew him in the States. That's 
stay on it, okay? Uh -huh. You got some good body work in and that shit starts to pay off. Uh -huh. But remember, it's gotta stay consistent, okay? Yeah. Gotta stay consistent for him. Big deep breath. Now look, one thing about this guy, he's kind of long, but he, he needs a little room to punch. Don't stay out there at the end of his hands. You gotta be all the way out or all the way in, okay? okay. You stand out there giving him that range, he's gonna get some shots off, right. okay? But yeah, let's remember, all the way out or all the way in. Am I stay with that? Yes, yeah. You see some action from that round. You see Tennant trying to punch back as much as he can. He catches his body going straight back and hits him with the right hand on the way out. Tennant's been reacting as much as he can. Obviously, we've noticed the Valle comes is the better fighter, but Tennant not to be denied as far as the uh, the wanting and the desire to win this fight. And he, he stayed in the fight and landed some decent shots here and there and staying lively and keeping Valle honest. His, his spirit is still very much in this fight. He, he does want to win. He is here. He hasn't been broken yet. Yeah, he's trying to figure out ways to, you know, change the fight around and, and, and get the momentum back. And this is officially the longest fight of Marcus Valle's professional career. Mm. The longest he had gone prior to tonight was 238 of the second in his mouthpiece. finish of Sosa. It was a mouthpiece of 10. We were talking about it. And, and, and I was going to say, Paul, he can't go off Steph Curry with that mouthpiece and yeah. keep himself safe. You know, Tennant had said in the fighter meetings, I, I, I've seen some video, I, I think I have faster hands. You know, Tennant does have some quick hands. He changes directions, he fires that right hand, left hand, uh, pretty quick, and he's made Valle certain times when he's coming in. The yeah. thing about it is it's, it's, it's more awkward, and if yeah. he had better technique, I think he'd be able to take more advantage of his speed. And also be able to get better weight on his shots. A lot of times where he is landing on Valle, a lot of weight is not on the shots. Defends well here on the ropes. It probably doesn't always land very cleanly when he's got him there, but yeah, right there it is, right there. The lieutenant has pretty good reactions. He is an athletic-looking guy. Switches southpaw just for a moment. Throws the long one too against Marcus Valle. Round number three. This is scheduled for six rounds. Fifth straight six-round fight for 24-year-old Marcus Valle. Seven and zero against eight and one. And that one, as I mentioned, was by a DQ that went against Jared Tennant. Back in the corner, good body shot. And again, answered by Jared Tennant. And that's, and that's smart on the part of Valle to go, just go more to the body. Tennant is kind of slippery to the head. Even when you catch him to the head, he's not taking it cleanly. So it, it, it gives him the ability to stay lively and come back with shots. But going to the body, you may slow him down a little bit. Maybe even slow down those reflexes, because Tennant has some pretty good reflexes. Even when he's getting hit, he's, he's, he's riding with a lot of these shots. Yeah, he's what I call a twitchy, twitchy fighter. He's got, got good, good fast switch movements. He explodes, changes directions like that. And yeah, definitely, I, I agree, Paul, that the body work would be really smart from Valle to be consistent with that, try and slow, slow him down. Well, as you broke down this fight, we thought it might be gauged by the temperament of Tennant once Valle landed a big shot or two, but so far, Jared is in there, and he's putting a battle up against 7-0 Marcus Valle. That's body shots there by Valle, but a good catch and shoot there by Tennant. I'll tell you what, there's some swelling underneath the right cheek, on the right cheek of uh, Marcus Valle. That's one thing about uppercuts. They tend to damage the face pretty easily. Those shots go knocked there. Yeah. down his mouthpiece. Mouthpiece, mouthpiece on the canvas. Good timing on this round uh, with a couple of uppercuts by Tennant, a catch and shoot. Taking advantage of the body shots Valle is throwing. Valle is smart to go to the body, but Tennant, good adjustment on a couple of body shots he took. Blocking and then shooting right back with the uppercut. Yeah, at the end of the round, as soon as the bell rang, you saw Valle nod his head and kind of make a face like, eh, all right, yeah. good job, this guy, this guy could fight. We talk all about the mouthpiece of Jared Tennant, and it was Marcus Valle that hit the canvas late in that round. You just walk away. Right opponent just of Valle's career jab, okay? by far, so far. Get behind the jab. Fix those fucking feet, man. All right? Yeah. You're walking, you're walking. They said Canelo coming forward. Yeah. You understand what I mean, right? Yeah. Canelo coming forward, Marcus. Hey, so let me get up. Uh... Here we see where a lot of that round was spent is Jared Tennant on the ropes, but firing off that. He's got that little catch and shoot, that little roll and fire. You saw the mouthpiece pop out of the mouth from Valle. He's got hit with a, with a crisp, clean right uppercut. And we also have some swelling under the right eye of Marcus Valle. 
The fight continues round number four. Marcus Valle in the camouflage trunks, black trunks for Jared Kennett. He was DQ'd in by his own loss with repeated low blows, guys. Valle's got to be careful not to go straight back. He took another right hand. He took, he took a right hand earlier in the fight going straight back like that, especially if he's in a square up. He's got to be careful going straight back while he's standing up straight. Nice mm. counter right hand again by Tennant. Tennant just got that on, on automatic pilot now, that roll right hand. So Valle's got to start to make a couple of adjustments, maybe start to faint on it a little bit. Yeah, you spoke about this being a step-up fight for Valle by, by a, a big margin. You're seeing now he's so offensive-minded, he doesn't think about the shots coming back at him, and that's why he's getting hit so clean with these counters. Which is one of the reasons why they were trying to go back to the basics and be brilliant at the basics in preparation for this fight, Paul. Yeah, yeah, you know, and, and also when you've got a lively, sturdy guy in front of you, you know, you're going to get hit a little bit more. Also, keep in mind, Baye is an action fighter. He's the guy who brings the fight to you all the time. So when you're going to the action, when you're going to the danger, you're going to be a guy, you're, you're, your defense isn't always going to be stellar because you're going to the danger. You're, you're going to be one of those guys who sometimes takes a shot or two in order to get in those big shots. Baye's going to be for me, Vizen developed into one of the more exciting fighters in boxing. Ooh, got a snap back there. I liken it to uh, baseball. Home run hitters strike out the most because they're going for it and they get hit. That's a great comparison. And I tell you, Tennant, man, you got to give him credit. He's lively. He's, he's landing his shot. I tell you what, he's getting, he's landing, had a good success this round with the right hand. He's an explosive guy. He's very twitchy. He's got good reactions. Vaya, right here, Vaya, at this point, Vaya has to start to notice that when he's got Tennant against the roll yep. with that right hand. So a, a good feint there, make Tennant roll, and now roll, he's out of position because he rolls on the feint instead of rolling on the shot. Now he's out of position, and from there you can attack him. So you, at this point in the fight, we're in round four, Tennant's landed enough roll right hands for you to, to now sort of understand what he's going to do when you trap him. Set that up, get ready to bait him into rolling, and then he's out of position because you, you make him roll with that before you've thrown the punch. That's a great point, champ. I don't think I've seen a single feint out of Valle yet tonight. Jared Tennant turned pro back in 2013, had three fights, then took five years off. Almost 2,000 days between pro fight number three and pro fight number four. And he thought about retiring. He thought about quitting boxing after the DQ in March of 21. Coach talked Good about it. Good combination here by Valle. Lieutenant undaunted, fighting back. Yeah, Valle needs to do more of that. Let his hands go. When he's got, when he's got Valle, uh, Tenant in position, he's got to let his hands go and keep keep his arms pinned. I guess what I'm saying, Paulie, there's a little bit of a, a last chance storyline with Jared Tenant at 37 yeah. years old. Mm -hmm. And he's fighting that way. Yeah. All right, come on, big deep one. He's gonna come out in the first minute with a lot of energy. There's three minutes to this, okay? We gotta be ready for minute two, going to minute three, okay? Yeah. So let's be focused. All right, now you're loose. Okay, you hear me? You listen to me, let's get those legs going. You're loose now. Don't some of that action, another action pack around here. Tenner, you see what he, he kind of falls in and turns southpaw at times, then he goes back to the right-handed stance. He just fires crosses from weird angles, but he's been able, he's been able to land crosses from both stances. Here again, changes levels, gets down low at feint, and then comes up with a one-two, gets between the guard of Valle. But how did that work? Because he fainted low first, and he got Valle to cover, and then from there he penetrated the, the, the gloves of, of Valle with that right hand. Jared Tennant's last fight six months ago, his opponent did not get off the stool after round number one. This is round five, scheduled for six, longest fight of Marcus Valle's young professional career. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Paulie Malinaji, Magic Man, your scorecard after four. Okay, I gave Tennant the last round, so I've got it uh, 3-1. For Marcus Valle. I got exactly the same. 39 37 for Marcus Valle. Get the last round to Tenant. Second round, he landed some good shots, but didn't do enough to get it. So I've got a 3 to 1 for Valle. You heard Mark Ferrey in the corner of the beast, Marcus Valle, talking about breaking down and using some segments, if you will, in the rounds. One minute, then you got that second minute, then you have the third minute. Adjust, you have your legs, you're loose. Let's go to work. So we're about to hit round number five's second minute of action. Tenant and Bayer. 
didn't even know this is the longest fight of Valle's career. I, I can tell he's in phenomenal shape. He's coming out every round ready to work. He's throwing combinations. He looks fresh. Yeah, you see that touch jab there? He's trying to bait Tennant into making a defensive move. Tennant didn't really bite too much there. You see now, now Valle not overcommitting to the offense when he traps Tennant. As he realizes Tennant's looking for the counter when he gets trapped. Tennant's also southpaw now. Marcus, the older of the two future stars here at Pro Box. Younger brother, Dominic Valle. A year and he's younger. Their father, Junior, a very big part of these young, proud Puerto Ricans' careers. Starting to see a little swelling around the left eye, the lead eye of Tennant. Probably on the strength of those right hands from Valle. Good slip there by Marcus Valle. Good, 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 good work from both guys this fight. I'd like to see some feints though on the part of Valle. It's one thing this fight, this get, getting these rounds has, has given us the ability to see. Um, he attacks, he's, he's, he's in gear, he's consistent, maybe change up the rhythm a little bit so that it makes him harder to, to be able to be timed. There his mouthpiece comes out again with the left hand. Yeah, I, think, I, I think both men need to get a uh, new mouthpiece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or at least ones that are fitted. Yeah, you speak about feints, Paul. I mean, that, that's such a great tactic to use against a guy like Tennant, who's so twitchy and explosive and, and awkward, too. You want to get that first move out of him. He's quick. Yeah. He's, he's, his first step is fast. You want to get that first move out and then counter. Yeah, because he's really going to react all the time. You know, he, he knows you're bringing it in. He's looking to react all the time. So, you know, bring that reaction out of him instead. And then once he's out of position, it's very hard to recover in time before you pay a price. Ooh, he's got a right hand. Big right hand. It looks like to me like he's got a beard because he's got he's been hit with some clean shots yeah. that were hard to see from Tennant throughout tonight. We are headed to the sixth and final round. There you see his younger brother, Dominic Baye, five and zero oh with four finishes. Father Junior and his parents grew up in Puerto Rico. Their mother Spring grew up in the United States. There's big brother Marcus Valle. Your job. That's your second win. You hear me? Don't, don't wait for him. If you stay ready on your toes, stay ready. Give me some performance. You're just standing right there. Let's yeah. get that jab going. Yeah. When he turns south ball, he's looking to shoot that straight left. Why are we going straight back? Work behind the jab, man. But right, he's here in the corner. Play with it. Bring it out. Play with it. Play with it. Use it. Boom. You know, this was a better round for Valle. He was doing some really nice things. But here we see Tennant, who's been very twitchy and explosive, pulls back and shoots the right hand over the top and catches Marcus Valle right on the tip of the chin with a picturesque right hand to close the round. Yeah, that's been one of the Tennant's uh, best weapons is that counter right hand over the top of the jab of Marcus Valle. Shows the need for Valle maybe to switch that rhythm on that jab. And again, fainting with it will, is one of the ways you can switch that rhythm on the jab. You know, at the top of the show, we talked about athleticism and what vibes Richard Van Sicklin brings to the boxing ring. The quick twitch reaction has been showcased continuously, Chris, by Jared Tennant. Yeah, absolutely. And, and like Paulie, the champ, said earlier, it, it, it's actually helped him to settle down. He was very, very perky, jerky, bouncing. Fighter meetings we are seeing happen yeah. right in front of our eyes. Exactly. He said, he, he said he's a quicker man. He thinks he's going to get his place punches there quicker. And it uh, looks like B that he's right. And you know what, the thing about Tennant, too, he's, he doesn't overcommit to defense. He's brave. You know, he, I, I, the attack is coming. Valle is looking to back him up. But he doesn't overcommit and go all over the place on defense. He's looking to hold his position, too. I mean, he doesn't do it as well as Valle because he doesn't have enough experience. But, you know, he holds his position enough to get that roll counter right hand. You know, you can't roll and counter with a right hand if you don't if you move your feet too much. You've got to be able to plant your feet and be brave enough to do that. Yeah, he's got the commitment to the defense in order to counter. Oh, nice right hand from Valle. His brother relocated him to Los Angeles many years ago to keep him out of trouble. That is where Jared Tennant learned how to fight at the Broadway Boxing Gym in Los Angeles. Midway point of the sixth and final round. Marcus Valle, Jared Tennant. I 
like that jab to the heart there from Valle. Give what's, you, you take what's given to you. Tennant had that left hand down low, throw that heart jab, sets up the right hand perfectly. Is that the Ray Longo put a hole in his chest advice? Yes, that's. I tell you that, it's also harder to roll on the right hand yeah. on the jab when you're hitting it into the chest because it, it, it busts your position. You try to roll, but it kind of backs you up and you're not able to roll and counter with it. I used to hit guys in the shoulder all the time when they fall with that down low, right between the bicep and the shoulder, that little, that little spot right there, that hurts. Yeah. It makes you not want to jab either. I remember Danny Garcia was doing a good job of that when I fought him, uh, touching up my shoulder and then my chest with his jab. And it was, I was, I couldn't, it was very difficult to roll on the, right, on, the, on the counter with the right hand on him. Nice body work on the inside there from Tennant, rolling and shooting, finding his little spots. I'm sure you remember as well, but with the Long Islander here, Chris Algieri, that was Ray Longo's advice to Chris Weidman mm -hmm. when he upset Anderson Silva. Don't come in and talk. It was Silva getting knocked out that night. Ray Ray said, punch a hole in his chest. I think he used some uh, explicatives in there, too. I, I, I did clearly. Knowing Ray. Yeah. I think he made a version of Ray's advice, but I tell you, Ray, one of the best striking coaches in MMA. And a fun personality to go with it. Oh, yeah, great guy. Great guy. Oh, New York. Yeah, yeah. This fight. <laughs> there you go. Great fight goes the distance, all six rounds. Jared Tennant and Marcus Baye. On the journey, the competition, when you're a pro box future star, is going to come at an accelerated pace. And guys, we saw a perfect example of that tonight in this eight and one opponent for young Marcus Valle. Yeah, no, this this is what he needs at this point in his career. Blowing guys out in one or two rounds is not gonna get you the progression that you need. Tonight, he's had someone in front of him who gave him different looks, hit him with some right hands that maybe he shouldn't be getting hit with. He's gonna go back to the drawing board with his team. They're gonna work on those fundamentals, like you said, and work on, touch up that defense just a little bit. Maybe add in a feint or two, like Paulie was talking about, so you don't get hit with those clean shots from a fast guy, fast athletic guy like uh, Jared Tennant. And well, let's face it, unless you got a guy who's resistant and knows how to go rounds with you, you don't really know what to work on. You know, it's these kind of guys who let you know that you need to work on certain things because they, they last. And, and in lasting, they start to, you know, show some of the uh, deficiencies you may have. Schedule for six, it went the full six. Yeah, and a good fight, another good action fight here. You know, with Valle starting out in his typical uh, Robocops style, bringing the pace, good combination punching. But Tenet, if you notice, even when he was trapped up against the ropes, didn't take a lot of the shots clean. And when he was getting hit, he was going with them. You see, he started catching Valle a little bit in between some of that offense. But Valle remains with the, the more consistent guy. But at times, basically, an, a, he was an animated guy, and it, it allowed him to land those shots like this. And sometimes, and he was starting to even be first with some of the attack, like right there. So the, as the fight went on, you also noticed Tenet was consistent with that counter right hand. He switched up the righty and lefty at times and shot some left crosses like right there. You know, Valle was more consistent, but I tell you, he got his work cut out for him uh, tonight with, uh, with Tenet's resistance and, and then Tenet's uh, fighting spirit. Yeah, I think more of the eye-catching shots were coming from uh, Tenant throughout the night, so when you look at that replay, you might say, oh, wow, that guy was landing a lot of good shots. But the majority of the time was won by, by Marcus Valle. The official decision is in. Let's get it to Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after six head-thumping rounds, we go to the scorecards. Tina Griffith scores the bout 59-55. 59 a 55. Jed O'Connor and Shami Shipman both scored about 60 to 54. 60 a 54. El ganador por decision unanime. Your winner by unanimous decision, Marcus Valle. Well, his previous long fight was 238 of the second. He goes the full six tonight. Gets 60-54 on two cards. Has the support here at our Pro Box headquarters. Like Mark Ferre said, it's like we're in the gym. Wait, we are in the gym. <laughs> and he walks away with a unanimous decision victory. Moves to 8 and 0. Oh. Tested, though, much to your guys' point in the process. Two down, three to go here. So two down, two good ones on a Wednesday night of fights here on Pro Box TV. We don't promote boxers, we promote boxing.
Derek Cintron, victorious in his professional debut in a four-round unanimous decision victory over a very game Dario Guerrero. We just saw Marcus Valle go the distance for the first time, but he remains unbeaten as a professional. Next up, the return of Naji Lopez. Two weeks from tonight, ProBox TV brings you a night of exciting fights from Sonora, Mexico, with our founding partner, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions. Undefeated WBC Latino lightweight title holder, Luis Coriano Torres of Obregón, Sonora, Mexico, will look to cement his place as one of boxing's future stars when he faces once beaten WBC Fake car box, lightweight champion, Misael Pichon Cabrera, in a matchup of hometown rivals. That is two weeks from tonight, right here on Pro Box TV. It has been over 10 months since we have seen Najee Lopez in the ring. He suffered a broken jaw in sparring and training. He has recovered, but he has not just simply recovered. He has changed his entire mindset. Everything about him is different than the time we saw him before, especially when we saw him before against Jason Monroe. He weighed 186 pounds. Yeah. Oh. 14 pounds ago compared yeah. to what's coming in tonight. I mean, he literally looks like a different guy. Um, if he can carry that heavyweight power down to below 170, I mean, the, we got a real problem on our hands moving forward. Naji Lopez has finished all five of his opponents. This is third straight six rounder. Naji, a very respectful, Great young man, and he's got a great relationship with Mark Ferre. Both boxing families, and Naji just 23 years old. And, and what applies to this right now, coming off a broken jaw, 10 months since your last fight, is it's not what happens to the man, it's what the man does when it happens to him. Three. Keys to victory for Naji Lopez. After all these months out, Lord, Naji Lopez is back and he's to find his range. Concerted body attack, focus on that body and of course the combination of punching that he's been known for. Naji is known to having a good engine. Liquid diet. As he moved his way to 168, his opponent from Sao Paulo, Brazil, Lucas Giabreo. And that's that's not a mistake. He's actually from, from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He is, but, but with the Argentinian jersey. Yes, yeah. you are not seeing things. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> I, I would think I would see things too, but we assure you he's from Brazil. He is, he is. Keys to, three, two, one. Keys to victory. For Rios, it's to start fast. You know, he's got someone in front of him that's been out of the, out of the ring for 10 months. He wants to get on him right away. Also, test that chin. We, we heard about a, a chin injury, a jaw injury for Nachi Lopez in, in training. So let's, you, if you're Rios, you want to touch that early, see what happens. And also make it rough. you got a ton of experience. You've been in with some big time punchers. You've lasted rounds. This is the kind of young opponent in front of you that you want to try and push your veteran skills upon. And my mistake, it, Christian Rios is from Argentina. Oh. And the next man we see, Sao Paulo, will show some Argentina as well. Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. Yes. Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, we're scheduled for six rounds in the super middleweight division. Esta pelea esta patada a seis asaltos en el peso super mediano. Your judges for this bout, Brian Gary. Shami Shipman and Jed O'Connor. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Wearing the white with blue, in la esquina azul, con pantalones blanco y azul. Pesando 171 libras, 
Weighing in at 171 pounds, his record, 23 wins, 16 losses, three draws with seven wins by knockout. Con record viente, tres victorias, 16 derrotas, tres empates, con siete por la vía del knockout. De Buenos Aires, Argentina, Christian Tuco Rio. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white with pink, in la esquina rojo con pantalones blanco y rosa, pesando 172 libras, weighing it at 172 pounds. His record, undefeated, five wins, no losses, all five wins by knockout. Están invicto con cinco victorias, cero derrotas y las cinco victorias por la vía del knockout. From Atlanta, Georgia, he is Najee Lopez. Okay, Jimmy, we see you structure your dressing room. Expect tough, clean fight. We make my commands of all time, protect yourselves all time. Cut them up. had one fight in Sao Paulo, Brazil. He's giving up a lot of reach to Najee Lopez. Blue corner, ready? Blue corner, you ready? Bail! Here we go! Oh. It's time to fight. White and pink trunks for Najee Lopez. Claudio Treo said, why pink? And he said, because it's my favorite color, he goes up against the Southpaw from Buenos Aires, Christian Rios. Rios had me confused. We do have another guy on this card who's from Brazil and yes. will be wearing Argentinian colors. I had him confused from yesterday's fighter meetings. Rios is actually the real Argentine on the card. And speaking of Najee Lopez, you know, we here, here at uh, Pro Boss, we have a, what we call our future stars. And then Lopez is looked at as one of those guys who really we expect to have a bright future here. Uh, has looked phenomenal and spectacular in his career thus far. A good mixture of power, uh, good engine, box technique and has gotten some good wins against very experienced opponents in his first five wins. You look at the records of, uh, of the, the opponents that he's fought and, and you, you know, you can tell he's upped his game uh, more so than most guys with uh, five professional fights. And even the guy who was, only had a 1-0 record, a 1-1 record, that guy was an Olympian and had yes. a bunch of amateur experience as an Olympian and Najee got him out of there as well. Yeah, Najee definitely on the fast track for his career, the way that, that he's being moved. And even the man in front of him, Rios, you know, he's only been stopped one time, but in the past, he's gone 10 rounds with David Lemieux, who is a knockout artist from Canada, who is, I mean, a vicious, vicious puncher. And Rios went 10 rounds with him. Former IBF world champion and considered one of the hardest punchers in boxing for a long time, Chris. Yeah, absolutely. So that's, a, that's an impressive feather to have in your cap, even though it was a loss. And Magic Man, being a powerful partner, I was I was traveling the wrong way with you on, uh, on the Argentinian theme. Yeah, but you know what? There is a guy. I, remember, I can remember the other guy who we're going to have on this card. Talking about Argentinian yeah, colors they, he's going to wear and be completely shocked. If they abrey you. So I had him confused with they abrey you, who will be blessed upon it tonight. And it's not like there's any rivalry between no. Brazilians and Argentinians. Just a small yeah, one. No big deal. Well, you even saw you even saw Rios <laughs> come in with the, the the messy jersey on. Yes, and then they won the World the Cup. I, I, I'd be flaunted for four years myself. Pablo Caballero certainly did when we saw another fighter about a month ago. Nice right hand to the stomach by Lopez. Lopez, a patient approach this round. Of course, you know, you got an experienced guy in front of you, a guy who's a southpaw. And like uh, the champ Algeri said, you know, a guy who has gone at this is with David Lemieux, who's one of the hardest punchers of the past generation in boxing. So this guy knows his way around the ring, knows how to maneuver in there. And Lopez taking a smart approach while stalking, cutting off the ring. Former Argentine middleweight champion, Chris, at 160 pounds. A good test is Najee Lopez makes his way down to 168 and very zen on this journey to a division where he feels he can be one of the best, if not oh, the nice best in the world. Combination Big shots. Lopez. I, I mean, I'm loving Lopez at this weight. 
you know, seeing him with, with, with the height and reach and length and, and stature that he has, for him to be fighting around under 170, I mean, it's incredible. And obviously the power's there too. Those punches look, yeah. look strong. Sharp, you know, and, and after the layoff, you, he's in such a good mood to be back. You know, he, yeah. he's, he's nodding and friendly at the stand down in the pre-fight. After the round, he touches gloves. He's just been so happy. He's been waiting so long to be back. And he's just happy to be back and, and uh, is excited to show his talents again. Yeah, he looked very dialed in in round number one. Happy to be back, ready to go back to work, looking strong, especially especially at the end end of the round when he pinned Rios against the ropes and let loose with some of these big, hard shots. That's one of the things I've been impressed, Paulie, about Najee Lopez is his power. He really has legitimate power, even at the higher weights. At 190, he was still punching these guys hard and getting the finishes. Yeah, against guys with good records. And let's, and let's not just leave it at the power champ. You know, it's also the shot selection. You saw right there, underneath, over the top, you know, uh, digging in from underneath with an uppercut to the body, a hook to the body, a, a cross to the head, a hook to the head. You know, his he shot selection is very, very key. A very, very smart fighter, considering ju just a handful of pro fights that he has. And of course, you know, this he's had a, a solid amateur career as well. He was a, rivals with Jared Anderson in the amateur. Which, you know, this, again, we talked about this guy was fighting at a heavier weight, and now he's come all the way down. At 45 pounds later. This weight. You, champ, you mentioned the body. I think that's, that's a really important place for the Najee Lopez camp to target against Rios because Rios is a durable guy, has been in there with big punchers. But, you know, touching the body is different. You can, have a, you can have a good chin, but how about a, how about a good liver? How about a good solar plexus? What happens when you, get, when you hit down there? Yeah, and that's the thing. When it comes to durable guys, he usually it takes the body shots to get them out. Double jab by Najee Lopez. He's trying, to, he's trying to set the trap. There trying, it is. Trying to bait Rios into making a mistake while not giving up his eye. Nice rush, sharp right hand there by Najee Lopez. Very, very sharp. A full lifestyle change for Najee Lopez and for Daryl Val St. Blast, who we will see next in our co main event of the evening. The plan was to work his way down to this weight division, not via a broken jaw and a straw. Nonetheless, Najee took what could have been a very difficult time in transition and turned it into a positive, and we're seeing the first dose of those effects right here, right now. Yeah, I, I, I call that taking advantage of an opportunity, even a bad opportunity, a bad situation. So uh, good, on, good on Najee and his team for, for being disciplined and while recovering, still focusing on, on the task at hand. And of course, you only can do that when you take advantage of something like that when you have enthusiasm for what you're doing, you know? Mm -hmm. He didn't lose, lose that enthusiasm during the time off. Instead, he took advantage of it and uh, worked on these things. His brother did the diet with him as well, guys, and he went from 378 to 268. Wow, that's a, that's a real rider type. Yes, <laughs> that, is, <laughs> that is true brotherhood right there. Yes. And, and I noticed Rios, he stays so calm, even with these big shots whizzing by, some of these body shots landing. Um, you, know, you, you can tell he's a survivor. He's been in there. He's got, it's not going to be easy to get him out of here. And that's one thing that has been stated about him, Chris, much to your point, a veteran with survival instincts who chooses wisely when to engage. And when you have 16 losses and you've only been stopped in one of them, and oh, by the way, it was coming off the pandemic, that means you're a survivor inside the boxing ring. Yeah, he's nifty in there. You know, he's crafty. He's a little bit jittery, which makes him a little bit more difficult to time. And of course, he's a southpaw. You know, not easy to take on a southpaw after a long layoff. But Najee Lopez doing just that. Naji stalking, stalking him, being patient. Nice shot selection again, going to the body, trying to change levels, dropping some feints in there. 
you know, Rios knows how to go rounds. He knows how to, he's not gonna just gonna hand it to you. So Lopez looking for different options and trying to create the openings, not just forcing the shots. And you see what he's doing there. You saw the little subtle things, the change of levels, the, the feints, and before firing, you know, and they're trying to get the right reaction, the right opening and create it. Round number three, this scheduled for six. Southpaw Christian Rios. His trainer, Rodrigo Correa, they train in Boston. Rios took a year off to have the opportunity to fight in the U.S. He had a fight at the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C., and now his second straight fight here in the U.S. at the Pro Box TV Event Center just outside of downtown Tampa, Florida. I mean, all the different looks by, uh, uh, all the different looks uh, Najee Lopez is, is giving. You know, he, again, these are all things that looking to create openings. He's not just in there stalking. He's, he's changing angles. He's sidestepping around. Yes. He's, and even when he's right in front of Rios, look at what he's doing. He's fainting, uh, mixing the speed on his punches, the power on his punches. And again, the level changes as well, dipping down, staying up high. Yeah. Um, countering going on the back foot there, you know, trying to show different wrinkles. Again, I'll keep reiterating, Rios is a, not an easy guy to stop, so you've got to sort of open the can a little bit at a time. And it seems like Lopez is doing that. The first two rounds, he's a little cautious. He wanted to make sure that he wasn't getting hit with anything that he shouldn't get hit with, and he didn't, and now he's feeling a lot more open to go out there and push push Live Rios to, to the point where he might actually get a stoppage. Yeah, and, and you know what? He's also not forcing it. You know, the, again, for a, a young prospect, the guy would you know, a nice body oh, shot by shot. Lopez. Uh, got right down to the elbow there. But again, the, the, the inclination for a young prospect, especially one with only a handful of fights like Lopez, would be, I can't create these, I can't see the openings I'm, I'm trying to create. I'm not getting them. I'm, I'm just going to force the shots. You see a lot of young fighters forcing things when they're not there. Lopez, instead of forcing it, continues to create and, and explodes on a dime when he sees the opening very very quick if you notice both on, on, on when he needs to change the angle and when it needs to fire Rios is not easy to open up but he, when the openings there Lopez is, is able to take it so far he hasn't been able to follow up well, with anything but uh, if he's able if he continues to keep opening Rios up like this he may get an opportunity first fight in 330 at 168 or perhaps eventually the best Puerto Rican boxer at 168 time will tell Najee Lopez and Daryl Blast Valsaint on the fast track here in 2023. Expected both to fight six times this year. But I'll tell you what I like about, about this fight too. You know, Lopez has shown us a lot of power. Oh, nice body shot there. Lopez has shown us a lot of power in his career thus far. But in this fight, he's showing us a lot of different wrinkles in his boxing style against a guy who's not easy to open up and create openings against. He's showing a lot of finesse. He's finding finding the shot, setting things up, taking his time. He looks very, very so comfortable in there. A little, bit, a little bit more chances, right? So pendiente, right? Don't go straight this way, right? Bap, 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 touch, get over there quick. You hear me? And then what you're gonna do is that you're gonna let him see that a couple of times. You know, that, that right here? Boom, bing! Bing, right? Boom. Yeah, fake, boom, boom. But let him see this, okay? Yeah, don't look at me. You looked at me. You looked at me. Look at me. Look at me. Don't tell me you didn't do that. We have spoke about how durable Rios is, and, and we've seen how difficult and tricky he can be, but listen, body shots like that will make it a tough night for anybody. And, and Najee Lopez, obviously, they knew they had a durable guy in front of them, and the body was going to be something they were going to make a concerted effort to get to over and over again, and Lopez has. Najee said, I feel great about myself. And the greats in this sport have a certain calmness, and we're definitely seeing that level of, of calm and comfortable from Najee Lopez here tonight as we enter round number four. Just the second time that Najee has fought into round four in his young career out of Lopez, but Lopez also does a good job of keeping that position, not breaking his position so that he can keep that, at least keep that mental pressure on Rios. Yeah, I, I've seen in past fights of Lopez, him getting a little too cautious, a uh, little too uh, aggressive and, and getting hit with shots while being offensive. I'm not seeing that here tonight. His hand position has been phenomenal. His awareness has been great. Really good vision, seeing the punches coming, getting the hands back in the position, or, or even better yet, stepping right out of range when he needs to. 
You see Rios trying, trying for some things. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a bit jittery. He's looking to maybe force a mistake out of Lopez and maybe force a false reaction out of Lopez that he can counter. But aside from that, he, that's another problem. A guy like Rios, who's durable but has 16 losses, you know what? He, he, he doesn't feel forced to initiate a lot of the offense. He knows how to go the distance. He knows how to hang around in there. And when he's uh, Lopez showing so many wrinkles that it's actually forcing Rios to keep basically keep his hands in his pocket more and more. In that fight that I mentioned, it was in January of this year at the Capital One Arena in Washington, D.C. was on the undercard of Tank Davis and Hector Garcia. And he went the full eight rounds, although defeated by Kyron Davis. You know, I think it's important for these young guys to get these rounds in early on. You don't want to just go out there and blast guys out. You've got someone in front of you who's got a ton of experience. He's used to surviving. He's used to, to, to not getting hit with big shots. And Najee now has to find a way. He's got to figure out the puzzle that is Rios and make for an exciting fight and land his own shots. I'll tell you, I'll tell you what he's doing this round more. He's, he's allowing Rios to come forward a little bit. Maybe if he can give Rios a false sense of security, maybe he can lose his side. Now at this round, we've also seen him try to back up and walk uh, Rios into something and now trying to step back on the gas and Najee did say that he knows that Rios can be super cautious like a possum southpaw busy he said it's going to be a great fight I'm going to take my time and certainly Najee has been disciplined and has worked in a timely fashion here tonight I like what Najee's doing he's trying different things out because Rios is not giving him much Might have elbow or something. Yeah, he's so rolling, that rolling his arm. Yeah, I think it's on. Maybe on that spin or something at the end of the round. Yeah, they got, they got a little tangled up. is complaining about here. Let's see. They get a little, yeah, they get a little, oh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. A hyperextension lock the elbow out. He got his arm caught behind Najee's neck, and then, and then Najee, Najee put his arm on the outside while he was throwing the hook, and he might have forced a little hyperextension of the elbow. So let's keep an eye on the lead hand of the southpaw, Christian Rios, as we enter round five. Sharp catch and shoot counter uppercut. Najee Lopez in the white and pink, white and blue with the Argentinian flag. Oh, for Rios. Najee pouring it on here in the pit. See, as soon as Rios opened up, he started getting countered. It's hard to knock out a guy who's not really fighting to win. So Najee's been trying to pick a fight in there. And oh, little slip there. A little slip. Rios is throwing so little punches that <laughs> we couldn't even make an argument whether it was a knockdown or not because there was yeah, no shot right. coming back. <laughs> Lopez stripped over his, the front foot of, of Rios. I thought he rolled his ankle at first. Yeah. Oh, nice right hand. Double jab, right hand for Najee. Again, yeah, the patience of Lopez, and the openings aren't there, or they're there for just split seconds. So instead of putting huge weight on the shots, he's snapping off shots, taking what he's got, pot shot, and shooting the nice, sharp, snappy shots at, at Rios while trying to continue to open him up. Rios, though, you know, again, this is a guy who's used to going this. He knows how to go these rounds, so he's not just going to give it to you. Champ, you alluded to it last round. Sometimes you gotta let a guy live so he can kill himself. You gotta let him throw some punches at you. So give him, give him, give him some some ropes to hang yourself. Yeah. Because uh, Rios now he's he's just getting so shelled up because he's getting countered on everything. If Najee just lets him live a little bit, he might be able to find that that shot. Yeah, and it seemed like Ooh. well, there's a left hand. He threw that left hand early in the round and he got countered with a nice uppercut and he went back to his shell for a little bit. But now he went back to it. 
It was a nice body shot by Lopez. And again, these are the moments, the moments where Lopez might be able to find some offense on the flip side of things, where he can take advantage, like you said, champ, of, of maybe Rios' minute aggression that we haven't seen any of until more so this round, this fight. Minute aggression, I like, yeah. <laughs> I like that. I mean, he tried it in the beginning of the round, he got countered, went into a shell, threw his left, big left hand about 20 seconds ago. Let's Actually see. landed that one, yeah. uh, the, the that, second That one. was more eloquent than uh, engage carefully, Pauly. One, <laughs> one nothing magic man. <laughs> 42 professional bouts coming into the night for Rios, and much to your guys' point. He's gone the distance 36. Tied his fight, uh, Najee Lopez's career, at his lightest weight by far. Head body there by Najee, who's gone from 209 to 199, 195 and a half, 192 and a half, 186, 172. Wow, that 14-pound jump Man. in fighting weight. That's 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 yes. impressive. And look how nimble he looks. I mean, the, the athleticism just blossoms at this weight even more, you know? And the conditioning. He looks great. He looks he, he, he looks super fresh. He looks yep. like it's the first round. Because that's one of the things you also got to worry about sometimes when you guy who drops too much weight that yep. could affect his conditioning. Lopez, I mean, Lopez has been in total control of this fight. Again, not an easy guy to deal with, but Lopez has been showing us a very wrinkles to his style, things that we haven't been able to see thus far in his career because he's gotten such quick stoppages for the most part. I, I, I like what I'm seeing here from Lopez. As far as I've seen, I'm seeing the thinking Najee Lopez. I'm seeing the, 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 the kid who was tattered in the amateurs because of his terrific boxing ability. Round, touch him up. Yeah, we spoke about Rios coming out that last round and actually getting aggressive. There we see an overhand left that actually partially blocked by Lopez, but Lopez came right back with an uppercut that landed very cleanly. And there we see Rios again with that overhand left attempt. That one was even blocked even more by we Lopez. See, we see how reactive Lopez yep. how sharp he is. And I'll tell you what, it's even more difficult to be sharp when you've got a guy who's not that who's not that active. Rios has not been that active. So sometimes when they shoot a hard shot here and there every once in a blue, it actually surprises you because, yeah. and, and it hits you, you know? So, so the fact that Lopez is still this reactive despite the lack of activity from Rios shows you just how sharp he really is. Because I'll tell you what, it's not that easy to be as reactive on the counter when you've got a guy who shoots a shot like that every once in a blue as opposed to when he shoots it often and you get his timing. Well, Lopez is not falling asleep out there. He, yeah. he knows what he's doing. He's, he's not falling asleep at the wheel. He's staying sharp. He knows what the plan is. And I, I just love his, his patience at this point. He's got a guy who's not giving him a lot. Okay, fine. I'll create him or I won't. Or, or, or it won't happen. It's fine. Staying patient, staying disciplined against a man with minute aggression <laughs> in Christian Rio. Sixth and final round. Najee's first fight since suffering the injury. Oh, good body shot there. Straight right hand down low, right to the solar plexus of Rios. The trip and journey down to this weight, and you guys would know better than any, though. And one of the quotes that I read with Najee's journey was, he's starting to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that doesn't mean just within your professional boxing bouts like we see here right now. It's about the whole lifestyle. There are uncomfortable parts of being a champion. Well, absolutely. They, they, you know, him and, his, him and his brother who did the weight loss with him were speaking about meditation and prayer and, and being mindful while they were going through their fast and, and their liquid diet. And it just, it just brought them to a different level of understanding when it came to the sport itself. Getting comfortable, being uncomfortable. Yes. Yeah, the part of life if you're a professional boxer, especially at the highest level, you will have to get used to it. And I think you're seeing that here in this this effort tonight, you know, in, in the patience that you're seeing. You know, you mentioned he's a young guy. He's not getting over his skis. He's, he's setting things up. He's taking what's given to him. He's creating opportunities. Goes to the body there. And I've noticed on numerous occasions, Najee with that step back and reset. Not just with the body, but with the mind. So he's thinking, he's evaluating, reactive. This round, trying to stall Lopez, but Lopez still thinking to set traps, still thinking. Nice little combination there by Rio. Says now he's, he's going to go figures he's going to go for the gusto. It's the last round. Yeah, Rios, when he does set his hand, he's not bad. He's, he's a little awkward for sure, but uh, he's a very capable guy. He understands timing, and, and when you got as many fights as he does, you, you're going to learn something along the way. Yeah, yeah, he knows his way around the ring a little bit. 
nine-year-old just landed a left. Rios looks like one of those guys who could go 15 rounds. <laughs> they go the distance. Najee Lopez and Christian Rios. Welcome back, Najee Lopez. process on full display throughout all six rounds of this contest tonight for Najee. Mark Foray talked about the relationship and the connection he has with Najee and he said it's because they don't BS each other. Ace of Beard helping take off that left glove. Let's we watch see, Najee. And we see the action in this fight. You know, Najee, you're going to notice uh, uh, over the course of these highlights, really good punch selection. He brought downstairs, upstairs, shots from around the side, shots up the middle, shots on the counter, like right there. You know, was thinking the whole time against the guy who he was forced to think against. Good body shot around the side. It was also even the body shots were around the side, somewhere up the middle. You know, uh, continuously looking to create the openings. A little bit of a hyperextension there at the end of, I think, round three or four that uh, we were worried about for Rios, but he hasn't seemed to recover from it pretty well after that. Again, you know, and then Rios got a little bit more aggressive later in the fight. Of course, it was able, we see Lopez able to counter with the uppercut on the catch and shoot there after Rios threw a big left hand. And, you know, good workmanlike performance for Najee Lopez. Really had to think his way through it. The fight was never in jeopardy, but nonetheless, it's one of those fights where by showing their class, you're able to show anybody watching just how much of a level of boxing you have. Because we've seen the power, but it's also about the skill. Official decision is in. Here's Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, after six well-fought rounds, we go to the scorecards. Judges Brian Gary, Shami Shipman, and James O'Connor all score the bout 60 to 54. 60 a 54 for your winner by unanimous decision and still undefeated, Najee. decision victory 60 54 on all three scorecards Naji lopez in his new weight class remains unbeaten as a professional moving to six and oh not really not really sure how how else you would score that fight but a impressive performance nonetheless I think I can agree with Paul about this. I, I really enjoyed what I saw from Najee Lopez. He showed his level of class, and it was a good get-back fight. Hasn't fought in 10, 11 months. He uh, he got the rounds in with, with a veteran and was able to outclass him at, at, at every turn. So it was a first time ever to start the show with Derek Cintron and Dario Guerrero. That one earlier went the full four rounds, and what a way to get it started. Aye goes the distance for the first time in his career, as does Naji Lopez, 60-54 on all three scorecards. And next up, it's time for Blast. Then our main event of the evening, Manuel Gallegos and Richard Vibes Van Sicklin. Blast. Daryl Val Saint, the 2020 Haitian Olympian. Six and oh, five wins by knockout, including back in October, Paulie against Paul Mendez. Mendez came in with a you know good record. And again, I was expected to go some rounds with Valsain, but Valsain, uh, we talk about our future stars at our Pro Box field and blue chip uh, prospect, not just of this stable, but of boxing in general. And, and of course, he showed that against Paul Mendez, a guy who had a solid experience, a solid record, has been in with some good fighters, got him out of there in a very impressive and dominant fashion. Yeah, he's just such a dynamic puncher. He's got a beautiful jab. He switches sides. He can fight almost equally on either righty or lefty, which is so rare in this sport, and seamlessly transitions. Very, very dynamic fighter offensively and defensively. 
And De Abreu is the Brazilian with the Argentinian colors. That's there right. He is. Yeah. Now, and now sure enough, he doesn't disappoint. He really is the Argentinian who wears, is wearing the Argentinian <laughs> colors, despite being Brazilian. He said it is in honor of Argentinian boxing, and the opponent is Lucas Giabreo. Keys to victory. First all, Pauly for Blast. Yeah, establish the jab. Blast always with a sharp jab. Changes rhythm on it very nicely. Uh, one, I think one of the best jabs uh, out of all the prospects in boxing. You'll probably see that tonight as they establish the jab. Be patient. You know, create the opening. We saw Najee Lopez able to be patient and create the openings when it needed to be. Lopez, uh, for, for Blast, it'll be the same thing. And dig to the body from both sides. You know, we've seen him uh, uh, have the, the ability to create the openings to the body. Take advantage of those things when you create those openings and dig. His opponent, Chris Algieri, a young man who you have worked with before, you called his fights. Yeah, I called his fight against Diego Pacheco, which he actually made it into the last round, the eighth round, and Diego Pacheco is one of the high, most highly touted prospects in the game today. And uh, Abreu would give himself, De Abreu would give himself a, a, good, a good account of himself in that fight. Um, was ended up getting stopped, but used his length and his awkwardness to stay within that fight, which is what he needs to do tonight if he's going to be have an upset on his mind. Also, Blast has a tendency to switch sides. He is vulnerable during that transition, so Adey Abreu is going to look to try and hit him on those transitions, take advantage of that. And also, stay calm under fire. I, I mentioned how dynamic the offense of, of Blast is. Stay cool, stay collected. You have the experience. You have more uh, more time in the ring than, than Val Saint, so look to take advantage of those opportunities when you see him. All right, co-main event of the evening. Official introductions once again, Mark Lichtenfeld. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this next bout is scheduled for six rounds in the middleweight division. Esta pelea esta pautada a seis asaltos en el peso mediano. Your judges for this contest, Los Hueses, Tina Griffith, Brian Gary, and Shami Shipman. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro Michael De Jesus. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue with white, in la esquina azul con pantalones azul y blanco, pesando 163.4 libros, weighing in at 163.4 pounds, his record, 14 wins, two losses with 11 wins by knockout, con record 14 victorias, dos derrotas, con 11 victorias por la vía del knockout. From Sao Paulo, Brazil, please welcome Lucas de Abreu. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the gray with white. In la esquina rojo con pantalones gris y blanco. Pesando 162.8 libras. Weighing in at 162.8 pounds. He is undefeated. His record, six wins, no losses, five wins by knockout. Seis victorias, zero derrotas con cinco victorias por la vía del knockout. The former Olympian, el ex olimpico from Orlando. Our tail of the tape for this, our co-main event of the evening. Lucas, my Brazilian wife, Chris, would say, Gia Breo, 29 years old, nine years the elder, a blast. Daryl Val Saint, 73-inch reach for both men. Val Saint at 162.8. Giabreo at 163.4. Here we go. It's time to fight. Blast comes out southpaw in the white and gray trunks. Blue and white, the Argentinian trunks being sported by Lucas Giabreo and Paulie in that Brazilian rivalry with Argentina. He said, I'm wearing the trunks in honor of Argentinian boxing. 
a friend of ours gave me the trunks as a gift, but he did have to cover the flag. He said that one he, he couldn't go back to Sao Paulo and get away with. Can't be that good of a friend if he wants to know where the Argentinian flag. Right, he's not going to be able to home. He's not going to make any friends in Brazil. That's very, he might have to move to Buenos Aires. Round number one, Blast 2.0 we've been told will be on display here tonight. The journey was different with the cut of weight in the new weight class for Naji Lopez, but they started their camp in Boca Raton together and Valstit lower back problems. Now he said, my body's better than ever. My mind is clear. Everything is powered with the new fuel that I'm putting in my body. Yeah, it was very interesting that he blamed that his diet causing inflammation, causing his back problems. Because when he changed his diet, the inflammation was reduced and he no longer experienced that pain in his lower back and has been a different a different man ever since. Well, you have the degree in nutritional science. That's accurate, isn't it? Absolutely. I mean, yeah, with the, with what we eat uh, thoroughly affects our body and especially in terms of inflammation throughout throughout our systems. The Abreu stalking. Bit by bit, you see a good feel out first round thus far as about saying being staying slick, changing levels on that jab. But the Abreu also not busting his own position, you know, staying in, good, in a good position defensively to where he can keep uh, keep on the attack and remain dangerous himself. Good little tactical first round by both guys. Now, the Abreu, he's, he's got a lot of experience. This is a big step up for Val Saint. You know, as soon as as soon as soon Blast came out southpaw, they Abreu threw a right hand right down the middle and popped him right on the mouth. And, and Val Saint actually smiled at him like, oh, OK. So, you know, he's, he's got someone in front of him that he should definitely respect. Paul Mendez was a step up, the former IBF world champion. And now Giavreo is a step up at 14 and two. Happy for the opportunity is the Brazilian. He said it's a oh, moment in his life. For about saying good timing shot. And those are the kind of things that will eventually deter the pressure of a guy like Diabreu. You about, about saying his been slick in this first round, but he hasn't been able to keep the bust Del Brayo's confidence to come forward, but counter right hands like that will eventually slow down that pressure of Del Brayo, especially if you follow him on combinations like that. Del Brayo took that well, because uh, Val Saint threw everything into that shot. And it's the right hand that Lucas likes to go to. It's his go-to, so we'll keep an eye on that as it continues. Good start for Blast. Give me some Vaseline on him, okay? You gotta wake up, all right? So let's be up. Let's not fall asleep. Let's stay with that lead hand. We're behind it. You're staying right in front of him. He's got feet going. Let's get going. All right? Everything. Your range is not his. It's in his range right now. Yeah. Oh, you're in. Okay. All right? I didn't know my stuff. You understood that? You got to stay ready. You're going back to the ropes. You're going high. Okay? Stay with that jab and then play behind it. Let's go. All right? If those feet are ready, give some water. Give some more water. You hear me? Let's go. Blessed having a very patient first round in the, over the course of the first round. And there, Bray who brought good pressure, but then when he finally found his opening, counter right hand. I'll tell you what, smart first round by Valsain to, you know, gauge the time, engage the speed of De Abreu, and then finally at the end of the first round, yeah, he felt confident enough to have the timing down of De Abreu and started to pounce with that counter right hand and then a, a follow-up combination as well. Blast also figured out that he was going to be more successful from the orthodox position than the southpaw. It came out the round starting southpaw, got touched with a few right hands, said, all right, I'm going back to orthodox. And he has talked to us about being seamless in his stance, and it was the injury to his right hand that gave him the time or forced him into working that left hand so much. Chris, and he pretty much became equally comfortable in both stances. Yeah, it's good to be a great athlete that you can just decide, nah, I can't use this hand, so I'll just be, get it just as good, equally as good on the other side. Nice right hand hook by Blast, set up by a nice feint that froze their Braille and put him in place to get to have to eat that right hand followed by the hook. 4,256 hits for Charlie Hustle. Pete Rose on both sides of the plate. Love the jab there from Blast. A little bit of showboating with the hands, but goes back to the fundamental boxing. Beautiful jab. Snaps the head back at De Abreu. Getting comfortable, even in the tight spots in there. We've seen in his fights, Paulie, that Beautiful. over time, his natural ability just seems to take over. 
Yeah, I mean, he's picking his spots. He's moving his head. He's finding the openings. He's looking very, very comfortable. He's found his range and timing now. Tell you, but give credit to Abreu. He's, he's, he's staying in position because he's also not exactly taking all the shots cleanly himself. And by not taking all the shots cleanly himself, although he took that one pretty good, by not taking all the shots cleanly himself, it, it allows him to have confidence to stay at close range and not bust his own positioning so that he can remain dangerous and continue with his mental pressure on Valsaint. Very extensive amateur background for Giabreo. 120 amateur fights, 95 wins, traveled the globe with the Brazilian national team, the former Brazilian super middleweight champion. 29 years old, nine years older than Blas. Good right hand there from Lucas de Abreu. Got his head offline and popped the head back of, of, of uh, Valsin. Another attempt there. Listen, I, I called the De Abreu fight versus Diego Pacheco, and Diego Pacheco is a is a big, big puncher, has a you know a lot of knockouts, and Abreu took those shots until really it was attrition that got him out of there in the final round. And then you see the consistency of De Abreu, you know, staying on top of Valsain. Valsain has his success, you know, but he, De Abreu not letting him rest on his wall. Ooh. Good shots there, and that's some of the success Valsain has. But you look and see De Abreu, he's not going anywhere, keeping his position, trying to remain, putting that mental pressure on Valsain to keep him Valsain thinking. That was a very tricky combination there from Valsain. It looked like he was trying to set up left hook to the liver, and then came right over the top with the right hand. Abreu did not see that. Here's a look at that combination that I was talking about. You see the setup, 3-2 up there. He throws left hook. Looked like he was going down low to the body. Throws it upstairs to land the right hand. Really, really nice setup for that right hand. Yeah, and that setup was a, be uh, a beautiful, almost half faint to try to use that as a bait, use that as a blinder as he shifted over to the left side to come back with that hook right hand. He likes that hook right hand. And there he goes there again. Yep. Okay. Nice 3-2 to start the round. Giabreo's two losses, the one that you called, Chris, against Diego Pacheco, and then he went the distance in his most recent fight back in December, lost a 10-round unanimous decision to the Dominican fighter in the Dominican Republic. The only comment he had on that is he learned a lesson that you don't leave it in the hands of the judges, which we have said in combat sports for a long, long time. Sometimes you're not able to get the finish, but certainly that is on the mind of Lucas here tonight against unbeaten Daryl Val Saint. Yeah, landed a decent counter right hand there a few seconds ago, missed a couple more. But Del Breo trying, keep, trying to keep that positioning and trying them. Brazilian national champion in 2014. That said, Lucas has six times more experience as far as professional time in the ring than the Olympian, Daryl Blasfeld Sane. And when asked in the fighter meetings, he said he didn't really know much about it. I don't know if he was playing possum in that one or not. He's learning a lot about Daryl Val Sane here. Round three scheduled for six, our co-main event of the evening. Valsanto keeping that pressure on, he's not fighting a bad fight himself. You know, Valsanto drawing the better shots, slick on defense, but he's, one thing Valsanto has to work on is in between the nice shots that he lands, he's got to take control of the ring because De Abreu takes control of the ring in between the nice shots Valsanto lands. So Valsanto may be winning the rounds, but the, the stress stays on him because De Abreu is, 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 is able to stay on top of him in between those things. Yeah, he's putting a lot of pressure on Valsaint right now. Landed a nice little up jab up the middle. Nice right hand there. You see the occasional shot there by, by Valsaint, but then you see there's a lot of waiting in between, and, and the Abreu starts to bring more pressure and start to land little shots like that. I prefer, you know, to dominate the, in between those combinations, dominate with the jab. Keep, keep, that, keep an active lead hand with different rhythm so that the other guy can't start setting things up. He may want to pressure you, but you keep him busy with your own left hand. And it's the Brazilian now who has switched over to the southpaw stance. 
Yeah, you know what? He says, you, you can switch, I can switch too. That's it. 120 amateur fights, like you said, Golden. You know, they, it's a guy who's got his own amount of experience. You got that right. He said he was very confident, felt very evenly matched physically in this our co-main event is now blast. With a nice right hook to the body. He said, you want to turn southpaw? Yep. I'll go, I'll go southpaw with you. And that was one of the reasons why the, one of the keys to victory for Val Saint was to hit the body on both sides because Dea Brady does have a good chin. He's shown that before. Diego Pacheco hit him with some really big shots in that fight. And it took eight rounds to get him out of there. A nice shot there the belt by Val Saint. You know, they were animated at the weigh-ins yesterday and a uh, little bit of non-verbal continues here as this fight goes on. Yeah, good little tactical fight. Both guys really, really capable. This is IQ boxing. Stay focused. Okay. So let's start putting them together. You're coming high again. You're standing high. You understand? You're not ready no more. Your legs are high. Let's start putting the punches together. Fuck that jab, right? Come on. You're ready. Legs are ready. Get your legs ready. You're ready to go. Okay? He's looking at the back, like a big right hand. You should know that. Stop backing up. Let's stop putting the punches together. Off behind. behind. See some of that action. Nice little counter right hook to the body off the left cross by De Abreu. De Abreu turned southpaw. Val Saint followed him by turning southpaw, and that was the reason he was able to have that counter right hook to the body. The left hand. Of it, it looked effortless, De Abreu. too. Yep. Good timing shot. Both guys came out right here in this fight, this round. Round number four. Mike Goldberg, Chris Algieri, Paulie Malinaji. This is our co-main event of the evening. Yeah, Bray getting off to an active start this round. Doing a good job of letting his hands go when he had Val Saint against the ropes. It's good, good use of the real estate from Dea Breu. He was showing to be a very capable fighter in there. Yeah, you know, both guys, you know, we see Valsay land the cleaner shots, right? But both guys have really have, have had a good defense. Even Dale Bray, the coming forward, a lot of the shots Valsay throws are not landing or not landing cleanly there. You know, he landed some shots, but it's, it's not landing cleanly enough to, to disrupt uh, Bray, Dale Bray's pressure boxing. Yeah, now there are a lot of them are partially blocked, but also Dave Bray has shown a really good chin, and, and the, uh, these punches are not deterring him for being offensive or taking risks. Nice body shot by Val Saint, but this is why the in-between, the sharp shots and combinations, you want to have that good jab. You want to have an active left hand so that you can prevent Dave Bray from getting confidence and, and, and getting back on top of you, getting comfortable throwing his own shots like this. Val Saint wants to stay active with that left hand. And Chris, in that fight against Diego Pacheco, there were things that you were very impressed with from Gia Braille. Have you seen him even improve from there? I have. I mean, you can, we're saying about how capable he is and his his, will, his willingness to, to pull the trigger on the inside, even when big shots are coming his way. He's cutting off the ring well. He's, he's definitely very capable in, in, in those ropes. And I, I think alluding to what Paulie was talking about, it's that in-between time. Pacheco in that fight made the adjustment mid-fight that, all right, it's not going to be one big shot that's going to get this guy out of here. I got to stay on him. I got to be consistent. And like I said, it was attrition that got the, the fight stopped. All right, a good hook a second ago. Good day, buddy. Diego mm. Pacheco, of course, 6'4". Both these guys, 6 foot. Body type the same and a good fight in our co-main event of the evening. Wednesday night fights here on Pro Box TV. Aye, big right hand there from Blast. Big swing and a miss from Daryl Val Saint. Six and all, five finishes. Went the distance very early in his career since. First round stop, first round stop, second, second. And now we are in round four. Well, you talked about that pressure early on from De Abreu. You, you, you're seeing that kind of starting to wear on Val Saint. I mean, he's not giving him any room to breathe. De Abreu is just right there, right in front of him, touching him with little shots like that. They're not big, but they, they're, they're there, and they're touching him. But you see, this is why the need to counter these shots is important, because if, you, if, if De Abreu sees no danger from getting off, he's going to keep throwing punches. You can make a miss, but if you're not making him pay enough, the, if, if the worst thing that happens is I miss, he, the, the, the Val Saint not trying to counter there. If the worst thing that happens, so active. When Val, if Valsain can start to get off it with some sharp counters in between, like we've seen at times in this fight, it can deter the pressure boxing of their brain just a little bit to give himself just enough breaks to be able to control with that left hand. Which is what I'd like to see Valsain do is control a little bit more with the left hand in between the shots and in between the exchanges. 
É, se você fica aqui e não chega, tem que ser ajudado com a perna, porra. É, tem que ser mais veloz. Não pode estar bobeando, pegando o golpe do adversário, caramba. Tem que atacar, Lucas, senão vão perder. I'm sure Lucas was telling the truth, but he was also very politically correct when asked who his idols were, who his favorite fighters were. With one of our founders, the Hall of Famer Juan Manuel Marquez, in the room, he said. Juan Manuel Marquez, oh, yeah, a great boxer eyes. and a very good commentator, too. His yeah. eyes lit up, right, Paulie? Yeah, yeah, but he was there. His eyes were glowing when he saw Marquez. I mean, you natural, anybody that's going to see Juan Manuel Marquez, is, especially when they're not from, they're not used to seeing him. Sometimes, you know, we grow up in New York with a lot of champions in the gym, but still, you see a champion that you haven't seen, they're brave, probably has never met Marquez before yesterday. His eyes were glowing. Well, Juan's that legendary status at, at this point of his, his career, his trajectory. Now that when he mentioned the Hall of Famer Roberto Duran. All right, we are in round number five. Chris Algieri, your unofficial scorecard. Uh, I got Val Saint. Uh, I, I did give the last round to De Abreu. I thought that he was very consistent. He let his hands go when he had Val Saint pinned against the ropes and, you know, finished the round as strong as he started. Paulie? Yeah, I've got it the same. I've got it 3-1. But, you know, some of these rounds Val Saint is winning are close, man, because he's he's landing the, some cleaner shots, but he's it's De Abreu who's controlling the real estate in the ring for the majority of the rounds. And it's they're fighting De Abreu's fight. Val Saint is winning the fight, but De Abreu is dictating what kind of fight is being fought. I'd like to see Val Saint take more control in between, and that's what I mean. If you take more control in between the exchanges, you dictate the kind of fight that's fought, not your opponent. Which goes a long way when you start fighting 10 and 12 rounders against world class opposition. But remember, Vassane is young. You know, we, we, he steps up a lot in, in his young career because he's been so talented. So, again, just like the Najee Lopez fight and just like the Marcus Valle fight, these are, these are the kind of fights where, you know, you're talented enough to win them, but you're still going to find some things you got to work on to keep improving, which is natural for a young fighter. Nice hook there by Vassane. And in the last four fights for the Brazilian, he's gone 10, 8, 8 and eight full rounds. This a six rounder. Next one will likely be an eight rounder for Blast, Daryl Val Saint. And let's see if Lucas Giambreo oh. has a are oh, gonna say it's a slip. Wow, that's an interesting call by the ref. Yeah, I think the way he went down it was probably the legs, but a lot Still, of times you get hit with a punch. Yeah, when a shot lands, and God knows, referee called it a knockdown when I went down against Julio. You know, <laughs> you know, and I got hit less clean than that. That's the thing. If you go down at the end of a punch, I mean, legally you can call that a knockdown. I, I agree with you, though. It, it was odd the way the feet, it, you know, fell out from under him. But it'll be interesting to see oh. if Abreu starts to turn it up here because of what he told us he learned in the Dominican Republic, and that is not leave it in the hands of the judges. See if that sense of urgency goes to even a higher level for the Brazilian. In the southpaw stance again here, final seconds of round number five. Good shot there by oh, the Kyle Saint. Saint. This has been a beautiful recovery round for Val Saint, really asserting himself. When he finds his rhythm, he's able to build on that earlier in the round. I don't see that jab that I saw his last fight where I was so impressed. When you're a rhythm fighter, you get that jab going, you just build off that. I think, I think uh, what I'm noticing, just to pick you back to what you just said, he's playing the right hand, he's playing the right hand, he's playing the right hand. It's almost like spurring him to work for the more right hands and hooks. He's looking for these fancy right hands, like flying in while changing the angle to look for a hook. And, it, and he's forgetting sometimes the basics. And you know what? Some guys get away with it. Roy Jones got away with that a ton. But, but, but again, you, can you get away with that at the highest level? You want to work on these kind of fights. You want to work on those basics and make sure you have them firmly in your foundation. But we know Valsane has a lot of talent. It's something that we saw the, the slip here. And then, you know, I think he got hit behind the shoulder. It was, it was, it was actually behind the head. It was, it was wasn't really a legal blow, and, and the way that his feet go, it was a good call by the referee. I, I, I was I was mistaken. That was uh, that was the right call. There was a shot behind the head, and for whatever reason, it's the, the feet of De Abreu slipped out, and he went down. He got right up. Obviously, didn't look hurt. So good good call by the referee. Yeah. And when I said that Judah's left hand landed a lot less than that shot, I was trying to say it wasn't knocked down in my fight either. But the right call did not down. Yeah. So so yeah, the right call was made as well. <laughs> 
Last southpaw, Giabreo switches to Ooh. southpaw. Sixth and final round, waving gray for Daryl Valsink. Lucas Giabreo in the blue and white trunks, a gift from his friends in Argentina. Back to the double southpaw, but you know, just to say that, Daryl goes right handed. Hey, I'm going to say it. Dave Bray, who fights pretty well from the southpaw position, is also. Yeah, no, both of these guys real crafty this fight. This is a high IQ fight. I've, like, I've enjoyed this. Oh. After round four, Mark Ferre, and he's the kind of coach you want. He's going to tell you what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. And he, he, I'd say he scolded Young Blast a little bit. He had a smile on his face after we saw Val Saint make the adjustments he made in round five. You know, I'll, I'll say also that I think if they bring you, I think he fights southpaws better. He understands straight right hand down the middle and then throw the left hook with their left hand. And he's he's landed some good tricky shots that way. And really good head. Yeah, like that. Counter right hand there by. Head off line, throw the right hand. By the very, yep. Blast went the full four rounds in his second professional fight back in February of 2021. Nice combination by Deberry, who's slipping back, back on the shot as well. Good, good trap set by both guys. Again, high IQ fight, you know? If you don't understand a high IQ boxing, you may not understand this, this fight may not be as exciting for you, but, but I enjoy watching these little subtleties of this fight. Nice combination there by Valsain. Boxing is a nuanced sport, and these guys are... are we have it set up here at Pro Box. Some future stars will make it, some will break. We've seen some very talented fighters no longer living and training here full time at the Pro Box TV facility. They may still become world champions somewhere down the line. But if you're gonna be a future star here and potentially a future champion, oh, you're gonna move up the ladder on a high trajectory. And this again, a very high level opponent for Daryl Valsain. And very early on in his career, this is only his seventh professional fight. Yep. He's, he's fighting a, a very savvy vet with a, <laughs> a good record. Coming off a fight over a former IBA world champion, Paul Mendez. Don't see that very often for a 20-year-old. So I had about there. The under the chin. 20 seconds remain in this fight. There's the jab, high, low, and the hook upstairs. That's what I mean about it, being a rhythm fighter. He builds off his off of the punches that he lands, and when he throws the jabs in the middle, like Paulie's been saying all night long, I mean he's a different kind of fighter. They go the distance. A great showing by Daryl Valsi and Lucas Giabale. No, way to work, kid. Good work, beautiful kid. Literally, the corner of G. Braille thought it was an eight round fight. <laughs> they were comfortable. I mean, they're still talking about it. The trainer's trying to tell him to get back in the corner. Well, he hasn't been in a six-round fight since 2018. Does Mark speak Portuguese as well? Oh, this 
Well, the Spanish, you know, they get along with the Spanish. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Kind of. Well, Dave Bray, Dave Bray in the fighter meeting they're, yesterday they're was showing, speaking, speaking Spanish. They're showing okay. the contract that they agree. I think they're still arguing whether it was any rounder. They think they think it was cut short. I still count, count a red hand there by Valsain. We saw some of the timing shots by Valsain in this fight, Chris. Yeah, I mean, early on, he looked super sharp. He's using the jab, countering really well. There we see a beautiful combination, throwing the left hand, right hand, which is one of the, one of the combinations that worked throughout the night for Valsain. He just wasn't put together enough, like you were saying the whole time, Paulie, with the jabs in between and controlling the time. Because De Abreu would give a very good account of himself and was fighting back very, very strong in those middle rounds and finished strong himself. Yeah. I I enjoyed this fight. I enjoyed both guys and the skill that both guys showed. Uh, I enjoyed the Abreu too. I mean, he's he's gonna be. Oh no, he can fight. He can fight. Off, but this guy, this guy can fight as well, and and uh, really enjoyable fight. Still very animated in the corner of the Brazilian. Official decision is in Mark Lichtenfeld. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, after six rounds, we go to the scorecards. Shami Shipman scores about 58-56. 58 a 56. Brian Gary and Tina Griffith both see it 59-55. 59 a 55 for your winner by unanimous decision. El ganador por decision unanime. Decision goes the way of Blast. He moves to 7 and 0. Scorecards weren't close. Giabreo still thought it was an eight round fight. And I did say, hey, with what happened in the Dominican Republic, when he start to show that sense of urgency? And if he believed there was a round seven and eight to do so, maybe he was waiting, yeah. but maybe it wouldn't have made any difference either. Yeah, I mean. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not. It just—it looked like Val Saint was just a, a, a different, a different level fighter. But uh, yeah, I mean that's going to affect the way that you fight. If you, if you got two more rounds to, to put in the bank, it, it makes a big difference. That being said, even with the scorecards, I think it would have been tough for De Abreu to, to, to pull that fight out. Good competitive fight, though. Yeah, certainly was. Six, eight. It is a victory for Blast, and it brings us to our main event of the evening and I can confirm it is scheduled for 10 rounds super middleweight fight contracted at 170 pounds Manuel Gallegos 20 and 1 Richard Van Sicklin 13 and 0 last time we saw him he defeated Najee Lopez's older brother Hakeem Lopez yeah and he came in as another underdog Hakeem Lopez uh, was a prospect here we had here at Pro Box living uh, on, on campus but you know as Van Sicklin came in with upset minded and uh, was able to, you know, do good work in a good competitive fight that gave good action, good give and take action. Van Slickland was able to take control of the fight and uh, come into the hometown and get the upset win. Yeah, Van Sicklin is one of those guys. He's he's a great athlete who came from another sport, started boxing somewhat late, and uses that athleticism to his advantage. I mean, he's he's got good power, explosiveness, athleticism, um, coordination, yep. and character. He's got a lot of character too to be able to you know come into these hostile environments, tough situations, tough opponents, and not be intimidated and, and come in and, and do what he does. Oh yeah, he seemed very comfortable at the fighter meetings uh, yesterday about about coming here, and he, he knew what he had in front of him, but he said he had a great Great camp and, and he's ready to go out there and perform once again. So it is Richard Van Sicklin and Manuel Gallegos. Guys, let's break it down first of all for 13 and 0. Richard Van Sicklin, keys to victory. Lateral movement, you know, the, the champ Algeria said was talking about his uh, athletic ability. Well, lateral movement helps out when you have athletic ability. Win the battle of the lead foot. He's a southpaw. There's always that battle when it's a southpaw versus right-hander. Take advantage of the defensive holes Gallegos will give you. The Gallegos is, is an aggressive guy, likes to bring it. So a lot of times, like we talked about earlier with Marcus Bayer, when you have guys who like to bring it, they sometimes will give you opportunities to hit them as well. Richard Van Sicklin looking to upset another 
emerging talent, and that emerging talent is 25-year-old Manuel Gallegos, 20 and 1, 17 finishes. Chris is keys to victory. Now, at the at the opener, we called them pressure, pressure, pressure fighters. Yes. Pressure cubed <laughs> is Manuel Gallegos. So effective aggression is a big part of his his game plan. And I say effective because you got to land the shots. You can't just be aggressive and get hit on the way in. Also, mix up the right hands. You got a southpaw in front of you. He's got a great overhand right. But listen, the straight right hand is going to be the better weapon to set up that big shot and those hooks off that. And then also, don't smother your offense. Gallegos has a tendency to be so offensive-minded, he gets over his skis, so to speak, and falls into shots and leaves himself open for, for his opponent's offense. First fight outside of his home country in Mexico. Official introductions from Mark Lichtenfeld. Leo. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event of the evening, 10 rounds in the super middleweight division. Damas y caballeros, este es el evento principal, pelea por atado a días asaltos en peso super mediano. Los jueces, your judges, Jed O'Connor, Tina Griffith, and Brian Gary. Your referee in charge, El Arbitro, is Christopher Young. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the blue with gold, in la esquina azul con pantalones azul y dorado, pesando 169.4 libras, weighing in at 169.4 pounds. His record, 13 wins, no losses, with six wins by knockout. Esta invicto, 13 victorias, zero derrotas, con seis por la, via de, por la via del knockouts. From Seattle, Washington, Richard, the Vibes Van Sicklin. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing the black with white, in la esquina rojo con pantalones negro y blanco. Pesando 168.8 libras, weighing in at 168.8 pounds. His record, 19 wins, one loss, 16 wins by knockout. Con record, 19 victorias, una derrota. Con 16 por la vía del knockout de los Moches, Sinaloa, Mexico. Jim, we've got trunks a little high, so everything I consider legal up here, everything I consider legal up here. Jim, you know what time it is. Fight hard, fight clean, touch them up. <laughs> our tail of the tape for this, our main event of the evening. Sinaloa's Gallegos, 25 years old. Seattle's Van Sicklin for Elder. Gallegos will have the reach advantage. All right, Rick, when are you ready? Luke, when are you ready? Bail! Here Bolts. we go! It's time to fight! Van Sicklin, the southpaw, comes out orthodox. Dark blue and gold trunks. White trunks with some black trim for Manuel Gallegos. Hey, a lot of guys come out in surprising stances tonight, guys. Yeah. <laughs> Makes our job a lot harder. <laughs> right. There you go. Get back to southpaw, Van Sicklin. Yeah, it didn't work out well. He got hit with two hard jabs from Gallegos right off the bat when Van Sicklin was in that orthodox stance and went back to it. Oof. One thing about Gallegos, he throws everything with bad intentions. Temperament of that of a movie villain in a slasher film. One of our fine researchers broke it down like that. And I guess that's also pressure, pressure, pressure. Yeah, pressure cubed. I like how uh, yesterday in the fighter meeting, Gallegos, who was the taller guy, who told us that he was going to use his height and box on the outside, as if he expected us to believe him. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> when he said that, I'm like, oh, these guys are savvy. They, never, they don't want to tell us nothing. Because I've never seen that from any of the fights that I watch from Gallegos. He, Gallegos, he does not fight tall, even though he's 6'2 and has a 77-inch reach. He's also put out press releases 
calling out the chosen one, Edgar Belonga. Oh, oh good body shot. Body shot by Vibes. Yeah. Double shots to the body. Good little uppercut there by Van Singlin. I tell you, Van Singlin and Lee Hakeem Lopez found a sneaky uppercut. Good combination in return by Gallegos. This fight could Ooh. start to draw itself into a real battle of attrition. Yikes. This, these guys are throwing big shots. And Van Singlin proved on that night against Hakeem to be a oh. Shots there by Van Sicklin. Sneaky shot. And that was something I was going to say. Van Sicklin can punch too. He doesn't have a bunch of knockouts on his record, but that left hand is hard. And Gallegos has to be trouble. He needs to take caution not to get hit with those big shots on the way in. The constant switching of Van Sicklin is a little concerning. But with the athleticism that we pointed out at the top of the show, from the theme of the night, not overly surprising, I guess. I'll tell you one thing, though, he, he, it makes him a little bit more difficult to time than Gallegos. You, as you mentioned earlier, champ, you know, Gallegos throws everything with hard intentions. It can make you dangerous, but it can also make you easier to time when you throw everything the same way. Yeah, there's no change up in speed from Gallegos. It's hard or harder. More Van Sicklin, maybe a little less busy, but he's counting doubles left hook there, and the second one lands pretty cleanly. Yeah, I don't think Van Sicklin's missed a punch yet. Oof, good body. That one didn't miss from Gallegos. Put a bit of good left hand there. Van Sicklin in between landing the cleaner shots. Important, because even the body shot there taken on the arm by Van Sicklin. All the fights have been great so far. This one might as well just fit the bill. Pedro Montillo, third oldest family of five. The brother of Fernando Montillo, the five-time world champion in three different weight classes. The Ricardo Acuna, they've been together for the past 11 years. Boxer, 13 and 0, round two, after a good start to our main event. Dark blue and gold for Richard Van Sicklin, Gallegos to the body. White with the black trim, the answer from Van Sicklin. Oh! And Van Sicklin, a little, little, bit, a little bit of a showboat after. Oh! I tell you what, Gallegos is a tough guy, but I'll tell you, if he keeps getting hit clean like this, he's going to put himself at risk. He's taken three or four really big, nicely timed bombs from Van Sicka, and it seemed like they, they, they stunned him, at least for a moment. Yeah, I mean, he might have a good chin, and he's shown to have a good chin, but you can only, how many are you going to take before you make an adjustment? Van Sicka is fighting very smart. He knows he has aggressive man in front of him. He knows he's a guy Another who has defensive lapses, and you can hit him while he's trying to throw his big heat firepower. I mean, Gallego's fighting harder, and some of the shots get through, but Van Sicka fighting smarter. We'll see how that wears. That's a fight wears on, or who wears who out by their choice of style. Gallegos, the closer he gets to his opponent, some of the breakdowns, some of the so-called experts in X's and O's have said he gets a little reckless. How you, man? Some good trading there, too. Man, these guys can fight in a phone booth. Pro Box TV, your boxing Whoa, channel, you again you with the win. Everything's delivered tonight. Main event, round two, scheduled for 10. Yeah, we saw a classy, high-level boxing match last fight. Now we're seeing a high-level slugfest. One thing about Ben Sigler, he likes to the body, he commits himself. I mean, yes. Gallegos throws to the body, he's busy to the body. Well, Ben Sigler mixes up his punches, but when he goes to the body, he, he commits. See, this is what I talked about.
with Gallegos getting over his skis and smothering his offense. He gets Van Sicklen on the ropes and he falls in and doesn't get any of his power shots off. Which may be the same point that was made about him. Closer he gets, he gets a little reckless. Yeah, yeah I mean, reckless and smothering and, and just he, he's, he's handcuffing himself. All kinds of stuff was going on in there. Had butts, elbows, <laughs> body shots, had punches. I, was, I got lost in there myself just trying to watch it. Six round fights that the Brazilians thought were eight rounds. Oh, good, good shot, little uppercut there by Van Sicklin. Why are you have a bunch of going on in there too, guys? I mean, and no one, crazy. no one cares either. No one's complaining. How do you coach a guy like Gallegos? You just unleash him. Just let him go. Get him. Van <laughs> Sicklin's like, I want a butt, one butt. Ten seconds. Like you said, the mindset of Van Sicklin, you know, he's in with a, a tough, rough guy. He's smiling, shaking his head. Yeah, both guys in a tough, tough fight, but both guys seem to be enjoying it. When I asked him about the win over Hakeem Lopez, he said, yes, it is a confidence builder, but we weren't surprised. And he promised that he would be better tonight, six months since we have seen him. Looks better to me. The way he's been picking his punches, I, I, I've been I've been impressed with the shots that he's been so precise with, landing to the head and to the body, picking smart shots rather than just going tick for tat with uh, with guy eagles. Okay. If you're going straight, okay, for second round, start picking them up. Okay, you understand? Okay. Yeah, let me know, let me know what's happening. Yeah, keep, keep. Talk about Gallegos has been busier, but Van Sicklen, it's been the better timing guy. Here. Good, good left hand right there. And that was actually the second big shot he landed in that sequence, and that's why he made that showboat there. And then a good exchange, just back and forth shots, is flying, both guys letting them rip. And let's see, Van Sicklen a little bit more responsible defensively on the inside. You see it when he shoots, he keeps those, the guard back up. He remembers to come back and bring his hands home. Gallegos, a little bit high, too high for me on the inside, and doesn't bring his hands back home the way he should. Black and white for Gallegos, dark blue and gold for Van Sicklen. This is round three. Both guys are putting themselves in harm's way. As they're exchanging, me and Paul, they're like spritting our teeth like, Ugh. Van Sicklen said pro box is how boxing should be, how fighters should be taken care of. And both men have come in fully prepared for our main event. Fight your way out of the clinch, fight your way out. Your hands are free, thank you. Yeah, Team Van Sicklen was very confident in the fighter meetings yesterday. And I, I can see that, you know, he's in great shape. He has a game plan, he's, he's executing. He just has a really tough guy in front of him. Good shot there again, Van Sicklen, that sneaky overhand left. Oh, whoa, big shots from Gallegos. You see again, Van Sicklen, a bit more responsible defensively, not as busy. Goodbye. Some of those body shots are getting through though by Gallegos. That's what I mean. It's going to be interesting as the rounds wear out, whose approach is, is, is a little better. Is it the smarter approach of Van Sicklin or just the all out busy approach of Gallegos? Nice work here from Gallegos. Big swing and a miss. And there's less punching in between by Van Sicklin this round. Wow, big shot. Gallegos is doing better at keeping that range once he has Van Sicklin on the ropes. He's able to get his punches off and not smother himself. very proudly representing his hometown of Sinaloa, Mexico. First fight in the U.S. against a talented boxer who took the collegiate route. Nice spin-off right check hook there from Van Sicklin. That's smart. He needs to fight with those angles. And speaking of Mexico, guys, two weeks from tonight, we'll be back live from Mexico. Juan Manuel Marquez promotion. Watch your way up. Digging body shot on the inside from Gallegos. For a tall guy, he actually punches pretty well to the body on the inside like that. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think this round, Van Sicklin's a little bit more arm weary as well. Ended a good left hand early in the round, but for the rest for the rest of it, it's been a very good Gallegos round. Yeah, Van Sicklin definitely looked like he's slowing down a little bit this round. The pressure from Gallegos is starting to wear on him. Pressure cue. Pressure cue. Ten seconds, let's put a bell. Keeping the hands busy here late in the round. Mm, nice body shot. 
from Van Sicklen on the inside. Right uppercut. Three rounds in, and I think we've had more action than all the fights put together thus far tonight. Yeah, here we see Gallegos pinning Van Sicklen on the ropes, which was a, a theme in round number three. And he was keeping that distance, like I said, not smothering himself and allowing himself to get those shots off and, and punch especially well to the body. That's why I think he was able to be more effective that round. It made a really big difference to, to be, able, be more cognizant of leaving just enough space. He even kind of switched his stance a little bit from close range so that he was able to keep that space to dig in those shots to the body into the head on the inside. Yeah, you got a 76-inch reach. You don't need to have your head on a guy's chest. Ooh, round number four. First 10-round fight. Scheduled for Richard Van Sicklen. Three, he has gone the full eight and won them all by unanimous decision. We talked about the action three rounds in, Chris. Those two guys early in their career who opened up the show tonight gave us four rounds and some fun. Yeah, that's true. That's true. The opening, the opening pro debut was a ton of action, but obviously we had a much higher level here in the main event. No doubt about it. Benavides aside, thank you, Seth Pauly. Many people touting Gallegos as the best Mexican super middleweight outside of Saul Canelo Alvarez. Well, I will say he's definitely the tallest, <laughs> the tallest super middleweight Mexican fighter. And he's young, 25 years old. I think Benavides is better than Canelo, so. <laughs> Chin. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh. Look at that. Gallego said, yeah, you want to lose your mouthpiece so we can dig in. Wow, Van Sicklen has not missed a left hand in the last four punches he threw. Hey, Van Sicklen said, you want to lose your mouthpiece, I'll punch, punch, it out, punch it out for you. We'll punch out a couple of teeth. Wow, Gallego says, tongue. Wow. He's hurt. He's really hurt. Did you see the look on Van Sicklen's face when the mouthpiece came on? He's like, let me knock out a couple of teeth. <laughs> Van Sicklen's having a good time in there. There's definitely teeth. I mean, I'd be shocked if he didn't lose teeth. Shots after the loss, losing that mouthpiece. Van Sicklen has an opportunity here. He should really jump on it. But did he punch himself out throwing all those hard shots? It's been a fast paced fight. You take the breaks he can get. Yeah, he's, he's letting guy goes back in. Yep. Benavides is 26, 26 and 0, 23 knockouts. You say it as smart as Van Sicklen has been fighting, he's still putting his nose right in there. He's yeah. fighting the, 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 the puncher's fight, uh, taking risks, taking chances, getting hit with big shots, too. But he's a little subtle thing. You saw that feint about 10 seconds ago just to throw, disrupt the pressure of Gallegos. He's also no tired by Gallegos. He's not tiring himself out with his legs either. He's not moving a whole lot, standing in front. A combination by Gallegos there. Good response by Van Sicklen. Sicklin looking for a seconds, strong finish seconds. here in round four. Gallegos thinking the same thing. Big right hand. Oh, I think one of those left hooks to the head actually wobbled Van Sicklin at the end of the round. What a round. That was some round, Radical. That's right, that's right. I got it all tied up after four. 2-2. Two, two. Profundo, profundo, mijo. I got a 3-1 Van Sicklin, but round one was close. That's right. Been a mouthpiece thing tonight, guys. Yeah, it sure has, Goldie. Oh. Good body shot there by, by Gallegos. He's making this his team, the body attack. But all of a sudden, we saw the shots come, the mouthpiece come out, and Van Sicklen said, you know what? I'm not going to give you a break. Let me punch out a couple of teeth. I don't see enough fighters do that. The mouthpiece <laughs> is out. The ref needs a break in the action. Go right after. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Getting hit without a mouthpiece of your mouth sucks. Oh, <laughs> Seconds out. Nice move there from Ben Sigma, taking advantage of the opportunity to punch your, your opponent in the teeth without a mouth guard. It's called killer instinct. Yeah, I like it. In England, I didn't, in England they call it spite. Spite. <laughs> and if they land, they say it was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, brilliant work from Ben Sickle in, in round number four. Yeah. I mean, really, those left hands couldn't miss. So, Pauly, you you have 2-2, two, two, you said, Chris? No, I have 2-2, two, two, yeah. I got a 3-1 Ben Sickle. All right. But a very close first round that I gave Ben Sickle. Oh. oh. Right in front of us. Oh. And this is what I mean about the smarter work. Ben Sickle punches in between Gallegos when he gets going. And that explosiveness that goes along with the athleticism that we've talked about all night, possessed by Richard Van Sickle. Ben Sicklin is just, he's so much more precise. And it seems like he's been able to hurt Gallegos more than, than vice versa. He strikes like a cobra. And and look, and let him go, let him go. And that's been the thing. I mean, again, the smarter work of Ben Sicklin or the harder work of Gallegos. And we're still wondering which one is going to start to show, its, show the fruits of their labor sprouting some. Right now, it's up for grabs still. Yeah, Gallegos is very workmanlike. He's coming forward, but I mean, he's been rocked several times in these last couple of rounds. But I tell you, at the end of the last round, yeah, I, th I thought he rocked Van Sickle. Yeah, after, true. After Van Sickle had a great round. Mm. You know, you also got to think about the early body work from from Gallegos. He's been very consistent since round number one about targeting the body. There we see it again. Well, we have seen in the career of Gallegos, he likes being the bully. Instead of being bullied, which I think anyone would choose. But Van Sicklin happy to bully back. And keep his own oh. man in the middle. Again, Pro Box TV, guys. You got this, is that why, right. this is why it's your boxing channel. Every single main event. Good fighters, great fighters. Facing 20 and 1, or 19 and 1. Depending on who you ask. He told us, yeah, that yeah. he had an unsanctioned victory. He's got a really good record. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> Oof, and this is a really good fight. And they are going at it. Technical boxing from uh, Team Gallegos coming. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, good body shot from Van Sickle. Yeah, good combination in general. Ten seconds, Jimmy. Ten seconds. I, I love the fight, but I just think Van Sickle's had the better work most of these rounds. You know, but yeah. he's had to literally work for it, and Gallegos is really, really doing his own thing as well in big spots as well. All right, so let's revisit. Yeah, effective aggression. He, he was coming for it. I said it needs to be effective. He's been very aggressive, but he's been getting hit with big shots, leaving himself open. Mix up the right hands. I mean, at this point, he's just winging both hands at any chance he gets. So, hasn't really been doing that all that much. But And don't smother your offense. When he's been having his best work is when he has a little bit of space, especially when Van Sickle's on the ropes. He's letting those hands go, and has been very effective from there. Use that lateral movement. We can set up some shots off that lateral movement, mainly that overhand left at times. You know, also use the bat and the belt. Win the battle of the lead foot. You know what? On the inside, that counts. I, I haven't really paid attention. He's done well, though. He's done well. And I, I don't drop your hands, right? Finish uh, the last key. Left hand. <laughs> Which he's doing that. We saw plenty of those. <laughs> plenty of those. So the battle continues round six. Mm -hmm. oh. Scheduled 10-rounder for Van Sicklin. They both are active early in this round. And that's what I mean. Both, both guys want for their keys there. Gallegos with the counter to the body. Van Sicklin with a nice left hand. Both guys, both guys executed the keys there. So both guys... I think both men are executing their game plans. It's just they're literally going neck, neck and neck with them. And, and like you've been saying, Paul, who is who's going to outlast the other? Much like we said with Najee Lopez, the greats find a calmness 
in being great, but also they find themselves able to be comfortable in very uncomfortable situations in preparation and in live fights. I'm very that impressed. That what this one comes down to. Yeah, I'm very impressed with Van Sicklin. I did not expect him to be this tough. He's got a lot of heart. You know, I knew he was skilled. I knew he was smart. But, I mean, he's, he's showing a, a lot of heart as well. I, I tell you, after what I saw last time, I, I, I knew not to underestimate him. I knew Gallego was going to bring this engine, but, man, I, I, I had a feeling that Van Sickle was going to land some of these sneaky shots like this. But Gallegos has taken them, and they're, they've put on another great fight here at Pro Box TV in, in the main event. And in the fighter meetings, Van Sicklin was not incorrect in humbly saying that he has improved since the win over Hakeem Lopez. And he's facing a higher level opponent in Manuel Gallegos. Agree on all aspects. He's, he's definitely improved, and he's, he's, and he's doing it against an even better opponent. Yeah, the slower the pace, the, the more it helps Van Sicklin. He has a little bit of space. He's able to see and set things up and think. Uh, but I tell you, just when you think you're going to get a break, Gallegos will bring it to you if you don't domesticate him, if you don't keep active on him. Van Sicklin, very intelligent, patient. He'll look to set some traps as this fight continues. He's done so on various occasions already. Going a little orthodox here. 30 seconds left in round six. Yeah, I've been watching the facial expressions of both men throughout, and it's 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 very interesting. You know, Gallegos' stone face hasn't really changed his demeanor at all. And Van Sicklin is a little more expressive. You can kind of see he doesn't like certain shots, or he's feeling confident about a shot he landed. <laughs> or that he does like it. Yeah, exactly. You can tell when he's vibing and when he's not vibing. It's a great way to put it. Oh! I was going to say Van Sickle's going to take this round off, but you know what? Before he took it completely off, he made sure he cracked it a big left hand. Back to the corner with a left hand and let him know, you know what? Well, I'll be back next round for more. Está ahogado, mijo. Está ahogado. Ya le vamos a... Tiene que meterle presión. Ya meta hacia adentro a la pinche pelea. Él ya no quiere. Está out. OK? Quiero que se meta adentro ya con todo. Mucha presión. Mucha presión, Meño, mucha presión, estar ahí, encima de él, encima de él ya, ya no le dé respiro, ya no le dé respiro. En el corner, they're telling him that Van Sicklin is spent, bring on pressure, bring on all that pressure. They think Van Sicklin is spent, and that's the instructions to Gallegos. Try to bring all that pressure now, finish it. So pressure, pressure, pressure. Especially now that they think he's spent. Again, how do you how do you coach a guy like Gallegos? You just tell him to be pressure, 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 pressure. Bang, that's that shot. That was a shot at the belt. Boom, he went for another again. Best shot of the round, but I thought Gallegos really carried that round as, as I felt like Van Sicklin maybe was using the round to reoxygenate. We'll see this round if he did reoxygenate. Because now after the instructions, Gallegos got, you know Gallegos is going to bring it. Gallegos has rebounded well since the lone defeat of his professional career. Punch in the foot. A win over Kevin Newman, the second. Ten round unanimous decision, and then two stoppages, including the one that he told us was not listed everywhere online. But nonetheless, this is a good start to round seven, as these two men are putting on a show in our main event. Gallegos could not get away from that left hand of Van Strickland and Sicklin. And he said that he spent a lot of time sparring with good-sized southpaws back at his home gym, the family gym of the Montiel family in Sinaloa. Did he get any right-handed work? Because Van Sicklin has been switching right-handed yes. rather off in this fight. Southpaw work is one thing, but you know, finding an athlete like Van Sicklin is, is a whole nother. Yeah, it's very specific southpaws. And Sicklin's been very tricky, very smart, setting nice traps all night long. Very hotly contested matchup. You know, it, it's hard to tell who's got the momentum because there's so many sways back and forth. Those are 
but heavy shots. We can hear them ringside. And was his corner correct in assessing Van Sicklin's gas tank starting to empty out? I mean, it seemed like that before in other aspects of the round. Actually, I've seen that in other Van Sicklin fights. But then he comes out of nowhere and blasts you with the left hand, hurts you, and, and takes over. Like that. You catch and shoot. Nice little left uppercut up, up, up the middle. End of last round. Exactly. Oh. Both men busy with their hands in close. Final minute of round number seven, our main event. And Sickle knew something smart. He was smothering to get some rest yes. as well. And preventing Gallegos from getting off good work. And though Gallegos, nice little step around there. Yeah, we, we spoke about Gallegos, how he's got one speed. That's one thing Ben Sicklin has shown is, is his change-ups. He threw light punches and then, th and then threw a big one. Get ready for the big left hand from uh, Van Sicklin. Try to steal the adjustment there because Gallego, since I've taken that left one at the end of the last round, got under some of them this round. So Van Sicklin adjusted it at the end of this round and went to the body with it. Remember, we are in his house. Okay? Put it right here, right there. Take the press. Okay? Listen. Listen. We have to start back in the camera now, right? Keep pressuring him, body, uppercut, body, okay. yeah, but finish with the right hook. Okay. All you need to turn and work uh, the turn, all right? Let's lock him up. Okay. Where's the mark, 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 Continues round eight. White with a black trim for Gallegos, dark blue and gold for Van Sicklin. He's going to walk on the football mm. somebody at the University of Washington. I think he felt that. I yeah. think Gallegos Van Sicklin felt that. He winced. He reacted, bent over, dropped the elbow. He's taking some hits with guys with pads and helmets on. He's taking some shots from Gallegos in the last few rounds. I'll tell you that. That guy goes corner wet Try and Van Sicklin slipped on him. Break right clean. I got you. Yeah, Try that corner. Box. Nicely done, to... Christopher Young. They didn't want to drive that corner. He had to tell him twice. <laughs> yep. They said, you know what? It worked for us when Wally kept it wet. <laughs> oh, good body shot there by Van Sicklin. He's, he, he's been Watch your way out. slowly going back to that. Very impressed with the awareness of Van Sicklin all night long. He's, you know, he's like, oh, I got him with a good body shot, and I got to get, a, I got to get that back. I got to slow him down. Changing up the pace, changing up the distance. Great awareness. If it was a quote-unquote spilled bucket of ice, my longtime broadcast partner Joe Rogan would still be telling the world about it. Watch your way out. Your hands are free. Watch your way out. You can hear the shots land. Yeah, Gallegos is still throwing heavy-handed shots. Not letting him go as freely as he was early on, but still throwing big leather. <laughs> Eighth round. Van Sicklin, Orthodox, Gallegos. Fighting long with that left to the body. He's landed it three times, just missed on a fourth. His distance and pace is not where Gallegos wants to fight. Think about here, it. hot oh, shots shot. from Van Sicklin can steal the rounds. Punch your way out. Punch in the front. There you go. And Van Sicklin's got himself good rules. Yeah, it's a nice little sharp hook there. And from the orthodox stance, he's left-handed, so he went with that power hand first. And again, that one just missed. Yeah, I don't think there's any question that Van Sicklin's a lefty. That, yeah. that left hand is very good, whether it's in the front or the back position. Yeah. 
And Paulie, you've always said about boxers who switch that it's the defensive side of it that suffers more than their variety of offense they can present. Yeah, yeah. And I'm the thing, you usually you, it, it, when guys get in their secondary stances, usually their defense is so nice little counter there by Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin did a good job of getting himself back into the round there after being hurt badly by the body shot early in the round. I, mean, I, I think he won the round. He, uh, Gallegos did nothing with that body shot afterwards. Vea lo que no está, cabrón, está cansadísimo, está cansado. Meta hacia adentro, acuérdense toda la chinga que se pegó para estar aquí. Ok, ya lo viste, ya lo viste cómo está. Te quiero adentro de él, encima, güey, como Guina, pero tirando madrazos. No dejes de tirar basically, madrazos. Basically, pressure, pressure, pressure. Entonces, este es el 9 y el 10. Lo puedes noquear en este, si quieres. Here's the body shot you guys were referring to. Yeah, it's a beautiful left hook, landed right on the belt line. You see the wincing in the face from Van Sick, and I mentioned a few rounds ago about it. You can see the facial expressions that he's not really hiding how he feels, and that one, he definitely did not like the way it felt. But then, you know what, Gallegos couldn't take advantage of it, like did you nothing. said, slowed down. And Sicklin actually made the adjustment and, and fought a very crafty remainder of the round, and probably won the round. One on a nice nice oh, nice oh. counter there by Van Sicklin. Again, small timing shots to well. subtly well. make the pressure of Gallegos pay. Round nine for the first time in the career of Van Sicklin through eight. Paulie, your scorecard. I got a 5-3, Van Sicklin. I got 77-75, Van Sicklin. So 5-3-2, right? Yep. Chris is very good at math, isn't he, Paulie? <laughs> Body and head from Gallegos. Good finish on that combination by Gallegos. I go with a straight shot. Five times you come with good shots underneath the round. The guy's oh. been a good counter by Van Sickle, though. Beautiful shot. Gallegos switching his stance just momentarily to throw a heavy left. He landed it the first time, missed on the second chance. I mean, for a guy with 13 fights, Van Sicklin really pulls the trigger nicely. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice shot again, speaking of pulling the trigger. And a better eye-catching shot. Gallegos is so busy. You know, they, they land, they don't land, they, they rip you apart to the body, they're partially blocked, they get in, which, you know, does wear you out either way when you go into the body and it's with that amount of volume, but Van Sicklin with the nice eye-catching shot. Yeah, in between. It just seemed like the way that this fight, the pace that it's been set early on, it was going to be whether Gallegos was going to wear Van Sicklin down. But if it goes the distance, if they make it all the way, Van Sicklin fights this way, he's going to be in control. And a man, Chris, to your point, who found boxing late, age 19, after his college football days were done, went the collegiate route, made the Olympic trials in 2015. And he'd love to move to 14 and 0 and 2 and 0 here on Pro Box TV. Smart way, Van Sickley just created some space while it looked like he was trapped. Went left, went right, oh. a little bit. Just changed the angle a little bit and made Gallegos back off. And now finding the openings in between Gallegos punches. And that stutter step of Van Sicklin on the counter attack. The corner of Van Sicklin was asking for a lot of the things that he's doing now. Those little subtle shots, the up and around that we're seeing from him. That's that's that was the corner asking for those specific shots. Oh, left hand wow. to the top. Gallegos doesn't really do well with all the trickery. He's trying to be tricky. He's like, you know what? Let me just hit you with a left hand. Oh, oh. And Richard Van Sicklin, much to your point, Chris, instead of just going rock 'em sock 'em here at the end of this round. Van Sickle got hit with some big shots in there, but just stays in the fray. Oh, good body shot there by Van Sickle. Willing to take some in order to get some. What a, what a fight. What a fight. Big smile on the face of Van Sicklin, 10th round to come. Big smile, on, big smile on my face, too. Every single time we put on a main event here at Pro Box TV, it's fireworks. Good fighters, great fights. Fucking finish strong. We always win the last round, right? Let's go! We always fucking win the last Let's go, round. Boss, baby. Okay. Start dancing, start dancing, start dancing, start dancing. Make a statement, all right? Move your head, finish with right. I love that. 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 I
of mind for Van Sicklin's performance tonight is clever. Very, very clever. Setting traps, aware of where he is in the ring, of the vibe of the fight. Yep. Oh, nice counter there. And here's my worry now. My worry is a lot of judges don't understand this, yep. and they just go by who's following the who wins pressure, and they, they judge the fight by who by watching follow the leader as opposed to watching a fight. You know, Gallegos has done some great work this fight, but yes. I just don't think it's enough at this point unless he gets a knockdown. I still think it's a close fight. It's a very competitive, do. highly competitive fight. I do as well. That's why I, when I won the event Sicklin, it could have easily gone the other way. So the, this fight ha is that, has that kind of score. Yeah, I, I had the first round for, for Gallegos. But I think we, we had other rounds that we were not on the same page for. Shots. Man, Sicklin has had those. Probably more so than Gallegos. And again, there's another one. The athleticism of Richard Van Sicklin. Yep, great timing, great rhythm. The I tell you, I would I would give Gallegos more of these rounds if he wouldn't get hit so cleanly randomly. Yes, yeah, trying yeah. to fire himself up with a little footwork. Oh, oh. a nice shot by Gallegos. Oh. Final Ooh. 10 seconds of the play. Especially early on, boy, a lot of those rounds were stolen by big shots from Van Sicklin. Van Sicklin's got to be careful going straight back like that. He took him straight back. There you go. That means the matchups are good matchups. <laughs> now. It's in the hands of the judges now. Our main event goes the full 10 rounds. Yeah, and then plenty of shots that landed both ways. Good overhand left by Van Sicklin. Gallegos mixing up a good body attack for the majority of the fight. Van Sicklin was able to actually counter some of those with some beautiful catch and shoots. It was, it was good back and forth action throughout. Yeah, this whole fight was a highlight. These guys are going back and forth throughout. But I, I thought that Van Sicklin did enough in those exchanges, was able to steal enough of the rounds, and I think actually hurt Gallegos at least more visibly with certain certain times during the fight. And as the fight wore on, the timing and the rhythm, Gallegos started to slow his output a little bit, and big shots like that were landing more and more frequently for Van Sicklin. 
Yeah, Vince, Vince Hickle was able to have the eyes in between in the storm. You know, like right as the punches are flying, he was able to see the openings in between. Again, oh. the athletic ability, the awareness. But Gallegos is just kind of just going, going, going. And how about the toughness? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't expect that from him. I didn't expect yeah. him to be in, a, in an all-out war like this, be willing to trade with a big puncher like Gallegos, and and still come out on top and and be able to fight your fight. And Gallegos, you could see, is used to wearing guys down. It was probably surprised that Vince Hickle not only resisted, was it was but we're still punching back and timing in between. Good fight. Who will have their arm raised in victory? Here is Mark Lichtenfeld. Jed O'Connor scores about 96, 94, 96 a 94 Gallegos. Tina Griffith and Brian Gary both score the bout 95, 95. 95 on 95. We have a majority draw. El combate es un empate mayotaria. All right, so maybe we need two more rounds of this one. <laughs> maybe we just need a rematch. Uh, rematch. Yeah, Let's go rematch. Good. That's good. Good fight, though. Good fight. I that's thoroughly better. enjoyed that. So we can we can we can run that back. Yep. And knowing the way we do things here on Pro Box TV, there's a really good chance we will. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and nobody will be disappointed either. Anybody who's seen this one will be glad to see a rematch. Oh. Majority draw in what was a spectacular main event of the evening, as Paulie said. All our fights tonight went the distance. This one, we didn't get a clear victor, unless you consider every fan watching around the world. They got a victory in watching this. It was entertaining. Oh, yeah, man. Good, good, good momentum shifts and back and forth action. Phone booth warfare. You got to ring them. Both guys did their best work at close range. The busyness of Gallegos working that body. The, 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 the sharp eyes of Van Sicklin in between to be able to time him despite the storm that was coming. Bunch of headbutts, bunch of everything. It was, it was, <laughs> both guys were hurt. Uh, good fight. Very, very good fight. And it's at the point now with Van Sicklin having so much success in boxing. We're starting to say he played football, Chris, a long, long time ago. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I don't think of him as a football player. I think of him as a boxer now, obviously, is what I, what I know him as. But I mean, he improved so much from his last fight, yeah. and he did sort of get, do that much better, improve that much, but also doing it against a, a higher level opponent. That really gives you testament to the work that they're doing in their gym and in between fights, so he, he can be even better next time out. Yes, and. Much to your point, that's, I think, the thing we enjoyed the most is, I mean, Richard Van Sicklin told us that, hey, that was six months ago I beat Hakeem. That's in the past. I'm going to be better tonight, Paulie, he was. Yeah, yeah, he's a, yeah, and you can tell, for a guy like this to have made the progress he's made throughout his career, from the amateurs into the pros and continuing into the pros, he's a guy who knows he, he, who's putting the work in because every single time he's getting better and better. Another great night, Chris Algieri, another magical night. Magic man, Paulie Maldiot. See, now I'm going to say Paulie Maggiano. Paulie Malinaggi. And, uh, inside uh, joke. Yeah, inside <laughs> joke, indeed, that now many people have seen and heard. But Paulie, Chris, great job. Always fun being here. Wednesday nights are owned by our crew here on Pro Box TV. And again, every fight delivered tonight and delivered in high-powered fashion. Two weeks from now, we come to you from Sonora, Mexico with our founding partner, Juan Manuel Marquez Promotions, undefeated WBC Latino lightweight title holder, Luis Torres of Obregón, Sonora, Mexico, will look to cement his place as one of boxing's future stars when he faces once beaten Misael Pichon Cabrera, it is a matchup of hometown rivals. It is right here live on Pro Box TV. We started with a four-rounder in the light heavyweight division. Professional debut for Derek Cintron. And what a debut it was. Then the future stars were tested. First, Marcus Baye goes all six. Victorious under over Christian Rios. Darrell Blas Valsaint goes the distance for the first time, remains unbeaten, and then a main event that delivered in such a great fashion that we might as well just do it again. For my partners, the Magic Man, Paulie Molinaggi and Chris Algieri, Mike Colbert saying so long. Until next time, we see you right back here on Pro Box TV.